ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. By Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. By Handycam, the astonishingly simple new Sony Handycam. All the excitement of video movies now in the palm of your hand. And by IBM. And everyone, I'm Frank Gifford, and along with my colleagues O.J. Simpson and Joe Namath and all of our guys behind our ABC scene, we are delighted you are with us tonight. We think we could have a real stunner for you. Two football teams within the same division, the AFC East. They have been battling all season long. They are two hot football teams. The New England Patriots, with a win tonight, can clinch this division, and they have won eight of their last nine games. They lost the other game in overtime to the Jets. Meanwhile, the Miami Dolphins, since they were defeated November the 3rd by this New England team, they have won five in a row. But there is something called a jinx over New England. That little black cloud, remember the little character in, in Little Abner? Every time the New England Patriots come to the Orange Bowl, they go away with a loss. The last time they won here was in 1966. They have lost 17 consecutive games here in the Orange Bowl. The players now say it's not a jinx. Well, we don't know about that. A man who can tell us a little bit more about what New England's going to have to do tonight to defeat Miami, Joe Namath. Joe? Thank you, Frank. Well, Raymond Berry, the coach of the New England Patriots, certainly doesn't put much stock in the jinx. He says his 17-game uh, jinx is not wearing a jersey out there tonight. His football team, the Patriots, are playing better football at this stage than they have all season long. They're healthier at this stage than they have been the entire season. The question in my mind is, will Tony Eason be able to handle the pressure? Now, he's only in his third year. This is by far the most pressure-packed game he's been confronted with. People say, well, he's a California kid. He'll be cool. Well, we'll find out tonight. The defense of the Patriots is a very good one. They're second-ranked in the entire AFC, but they will have their hands full with Marino and the likes of the Marx Brothers. Now, here's the juice to tune us in on the Dolphins. Well, Joe, you said Marino. When you talk about Miami, you start with Marino. 27 touchdowns, near 4,000 yards, and Don Shula says just now at the top of his game. Now, his two worst games have been against New England. Uh, one was the first game they played this year, but Mark Duper did not play. They're a different team with Duper. They're 5-0 and since his return. Defensively, what Miami must do is keep New England from running the football. They don't want to they don't want to get in a shootout. New England wants to control the ball, so Miami is going to have to stop them from running the ball. The key there is going to be their nose tackle, Mike Charles. They're two inside linebackers, Jackie Ship and Jay Brophy. When they lost to New England earlier in this year, New England went 80 yards on two 80-yard drives late in the game, and most of the runs were run right up the middle, so those guys must perform well if uh, Miami is going to win here tonight. In any event, first place is on the line, so it should be one well of a football game. And the Orange Bowl is sold out, of course. It has been raining here this evening. We're looking at the captains on the field for the Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. Our referee tonight is Dick Jorgensen. Miami, as you can see, will receive here the opening kickoff. Our stadium announcer, we understand, is going to announce the national anthem and ask a very enthusiastic stadium crowd if they will rise and sing the national anthem as we look at head coach Don Shula now in his 23rd year as a head coach crash in Newfoundland we ask that you and on his the national opposite anthem. side of the field Ray Berry in his second full year oh, the Hall of Famer
tonight's national anthem dedicated to the victims of that tragic Newfoundland crash, the victims and their family. The Miami Dolphins have won the toss tonight. They will have first possession. Uh, when you talk about the Orange Bowl, you talk about tremendous pressure for any team that comes into the Orange Bowl. The Dolphins are 6-0 here this year. They have a remarkable home field edge. If you were with us a couple of weeks ago at the Bear game, you realize that the crowd becomes almost the 12th man for the Dolphins on many occasions. The Bears had to stop and wait, hoping for some kind of quiet where they could hear the signal snap and the call, the automatics, and they didn't get much of that. Deep for the Dolphins, Lorenzo Hampton is back there, the first-round draft pick this year out of Florida, averaging a little over 23 yards on the return. Joe Carter is back there with him, and Tony Franklin will kick off for New England. If New England wins tonight, I'll tell you once again, they are the AFC Eastern Division champions for the first time since 1978. A win for Miami, they still have to go on and defeat Buffalo to assure themselves an AFC East title. The stadium is rocking. will stay in the end zone. The field was covered prior to the game, although it did have a little bit of a mist after they had taken the tarp off. As we look at Dan Marino, truly remarkable career. He is ever so young to accomplish what he has accomplished. There are the people that work on the other end for Dan Marino. Mark Clayton needs seven receptions this season, set yet another Dolphin record, break his own as a matter of fact. He needs seven to break his record of 73 receptions set a year ago. Duper, of course, back and healthy. They are awesome when they are together. First and 10 Miami. Marino steps back into the pocket and tries to get the ball to Clayton. And you saw Clayton slip a little bit, and I believe the field is a little damp. It was misting on and off after they had taken the tarp. And early we saw Davenport in the end zone slip. It'll be mostly a 3-4. Garen Barris, the defensive left end, the rookie from Stanford, has replaced an injured Ken Sims, and he is playing very well there. The cornerbacks, Lippitt and Claiborne, will be under tremendous pressure tonight. Second down and 10 Miami. Tony Nathan. The versatile one is held for a two-yard gain. It'll bring up a third down and eight. Well, this first drive is an important drive for both teams. Miami has been very successful on first drives. They've scored six times on their first drives. Only Washington Redskins have done better than that. You know, the other thing, uh, besides the rain factor, the dampness, Frank, I got to believe that this northeast wind we have, it's only about a 10, 15 mile an hour wind, but it did affect that kickoff by Tony Frank, and right now the Dolphins are going into a slight breeze. On November the 3rd, when New England defeated the Dolphins, Nat Moore was not available. Mark Duper was not available. They are both in the lineup now. And third down of seven. The flag is down. Marino is back. And Marino fires. He's in and out of the hands of Nat Moore. But a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Again, our referee tonight, Dick Jorgensen. The indication against New England. So it'll be a five-yard penalty, yet it will be short of a first down. Don Shula with his remarkable career has taken teams to five Super Bowls, four of them here in Miami after the 71 season, after 72. All size, number 60, defense, still third down. And of course, Don Shula took the team following the 73 season to the Super Bowl. And of course, he had the Baltimore Super Bowl. And that, of course, the loss, famous loss to the Jets right here in the Orange Bowl. Third down, now and three. Davenport is in the lineup for Miami. That's Nathan out of the backfield, and he is hit and held short of the first down. Good defensive play by the veteran Roland James. So New England's defense, rated fifth in the NFL, into tonight, is able to stop the first offensive moved by these Miami Dolphins. We'll look at it from a wide angle. Nathan, top of your screen, played well by James. 
Yeah, they went his own defense that time, and Roland James' responsibility was to the outside in the shorter area. But I want to tell you, that was a good tackle. Not too many people are going to bring Tony Nathan down one-on-one -on -one out there. Here's a dangerous return, man. That's Irving Fryer. He's taken two backs this year for touchdowns, 177 yards, 185 yards. He has blazing speed. Now in his second year, he's healthy, and he is dangerous. Reggie Roby hangs one up to the 17-yard line. He's got a picket line. It was Roby who made the stop as Fryer got behind the picket line, got outside, had to cut back, but he gets out over the 45-yard line, and New England has great field position. Well, they're a little lucky on that play because number 28, Jim Bowman, came downfield, and he definitely clipped the man to, to spring Irving. Tony Eason, you had a glimpse of him a moment ago. Injured his shoulder a few weeks ago. Steve Grogan replaced him, but he's been back and has started the last two games and has defeated the Colts and the Lions. Passing for just under 57%, nine touchdowns, 13 interceptions. He'll be fighting the crowd tonight. That's Tony Collins. Collins, finally taken down by Bud Brown. Collins will get about four yards. And let's take a look at Irving Fryer. He had a great setup, a great picket line on the outside. Now watch the bottom of your screen, 28 now. That's a definite clip. He hit, the, he hit number 52 right in his back. And now to the outside, picking up blocks. And watch Rev G. Roby. He'll make the stop. Irving Fryer, wide receiver. There was a gain of four yards by Collins as New England is in Miami territory at the 49-yard line. It's second down and six. Craig James. And James up close to a first down for New England. James, of course, over 1,000 yards rushing this season, having just a superb year as we look at the defensive unit at the Dolphins. They're rated 24th in the NFL. They're 23rd against the run, 23rd against the pass. All they do is play good enough to win, as we saw a couple of weeks ago against the Chicago Bears. The old cliche in the National Football League is that they bend, but they don't break. Sometimes they even break, but the offense is capable of getting enough points to take care of it. Third down and one. Mosi Tatupu is in there with Craig James at setbacks. Tatupu. And he has the first down at the 37-yard line. There's a flag down. First down New England Patriots. I think it's, no, it's not a flag. It's something that is blown out of the stands. Oh. So that first down will stand. It's inside the 37-yard line of Miami. Well, quite often you hear that time of possession is overrated, but not in a game like this. New England does not want to get in a shootout with Miami. They want to control the ball on the ground, score, and keep Marino on the sidelines. And they have the people and Tony Collins and Craig James to do just that on first and ten. Well, that's one I'll never figure out. Why would Tony James... Uh, you know, why we're trying to run a draw play without having thrown a pass yet. You know, uh, you're a running type team. Miami is forced to play the run against you, and they come out and run a draw. I, I can't figure that you're out. You're right, Joe. A running team, you must play them for the run on first down. And on first and ten, I don't think Miami was expect I mean, expecting New England to throw a pass. A pass, that's right. You want the defensive front to be charging when you run a, run a draw play. They certainly weren't charging that time. There was a loss of one. It's second down and 11. Collins. Hannah tries to get the block, but Collins couldn't cut back, and Glenn Blackwood was up there to make the stop at the line of scrimmage. Big John Hannah was out in front of the play. Collins took a look back inside, couldn't bring it back inside because of the pursuit. And we asked Raymond Barry this morning in the meeting, which one of you guys called the plays out there? Of course, when Grogan was playing, he had the chance to call the plays, but Coach Barry said he's the one that sends the plays in right now, so don't think that Eason is making those foolish calls of running a draw without having thrown a pass <laughs> so, yet. Collins is a good receiver out of the backfield. Cedric Jones is in to join Stanley Morgan, Irving Fryer, Stephen Starring, four wide receivers for the Patriots. Picked off, Bud Brown. Eason obviously was planning on one of his wide receivers to make a move other than the one they made. But Bud Brown was wide open, but there was not a Patriot near it. 
There's not a Patriot here in any way you look at it. It's a really a horrendous pass by Eason. There's a defender just waiting on the ball. Had his receiver even broken in that direction, but Brown was going to intercept the pass or at least break it up. Very poor choice on Eason's part. Or break the receiver up. <laughs> but Brown on a 26-yard return brings it back to the 41-yard line. Now all of a sudden Miami has good field position. A lot of emotion building up to this game. So much on the line. Dan Marino looks it over. Play action by Marino. Rifles one deep, and this one will be picked off. Raymond Claiborne. Claiborne picks it off, brings it back to the 19-yard line. And two quick turnovers. The intended receiver was Mark Duper. Well, it was interesting because Mark Duper got double coverage. He was not open. And at the same time, Mark Clayton was running a deep cross pattern. He was open. There was pressure on Marino right at the last second. Now, he just rifles this. He's looking right. There he looks right now. Quickly, he looks back, sees Duper. He also sees a New England Patriot right in his face. Tried to whip it deep. Threw it short, and Claiborne was there. And that Patriot that was in his face was Andre Tippett, a man who came into this weekend leading the NFL in sacks 14 and a half. At the 19-yard line. No score, 9.57 remaining in the first quarter. James. Found a little something over the right side. Runs into Duck Betters over there. And he'll get about three out of that. And there is Raymond Claiborne. Been around for quite a while. First round pick back in 77. That was his 26th career interception. Hey, Joe, like us, his wife had a little girl in October also. Lindsay Marie. All right. And you know Raymond's one of the three guys on this New England team that are really tired of losing here. Steve Nelson and Julius Adams. They've been here for all of those defeats. Nearly all of them. Anyway, all the two. James got four. Out to the 22. It's second down and six. And here's Tony Collins. Fumbles the football. The ball is loose. And a Dolphin has it. Bud Brown, who had the interception a short while ago, covers it for the Dolphins. Three quick turnovers. It's a beautiful play. It's a little trap coming over here to the left side. A little underhand off. He picked up the trap, made a real nice cut back over the middle. And a good play by Bob Rudzinski. Ever on the ball. Yeah. The Dolphins get it right back. They're at their own 40-yard line. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. That thing works like a Chevy truck. But me and my buddies want to get away on a rough, tough expedition. What works for us is my rough, tough sport truck. Chevy S10 Maxi Cab. It's got room for all our survival gear. And more room inside than any compact pickup ever. So bring on the wild, bring on the moth. Ah, there's nothing like roughing it. Hey, if it doesn't fit my S10, it doesn't fit my life. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Nothing. We're here at the 18th hole of this light beer open, and we've seen some real unusual shots today. You said it. Hey, Bob, I think you got a birdie! Yeah. I'll see. How am I supposed to hit it through this tree? No problem, Bert. How's you going to get out of this one? Make it two. Three, four. It's a good thing lights less filling. John, the last player's approaching the tee. I want to go to 100 yourself. I won't be long, girls. Hold my calls, will you? <laughs> it hit the weather vane. It's in the drain. This comes out. It's going on the green. It's going in the hole. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. This open ought to be closed. On October 18, 1976, when New England hosted the New York Jets on Monday Night Football, the Patriots rushed for 330 yards, the most ever by a team on Monday night. 103 yards that night for Grogan. Became the only Patriots quarterback to rush for 100 yards in a game. He, of course, was injured three weeks ago against the Jets. Broke a bone in his 
leg and also injured his knee. To set this in perspective once again, the Miami Dolphins are 10 and 4 in the AFC East. So too are the New England Patriots. A win by the Dolphins tonight, and they will not clinch the divisional title. They would have to beat Buffalo right here in the Orange Bowl next week. But the Patriots with a win tonight, they will clinch the AFC East. First down and 10. The Dolphins inside the 40-yard line of the New England Patriots. Tony Nathan. Looks back inside. Gets hit by Larry McGrew, the inside linebacker, after a gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Tony Nathan, the very versatile offensive back for the Miami Dolphins, probably doesn't get the credit he should get. He is once again this season over 1,000 yards combined in rushing and receiving. Last week, 10 receptions against Green Bay. Always there when you need it done. Doesn't cough the football up. Just a steady, hard worker, Tony Nathan. They mark it at the 37, so it's second down and eight for the Dolphins. 8.34 remaining here in the first quarter. No score. They're all in the pattern. And Moreno fires to Dan Johnson. Johnson comes down with it near the 28-yard line. First down yardage. First down Miami. Johnson playing with a very sore hamstring. Only worked one day this past week. And Joe, he had everyone in this pattern. Everyone in the pattern, it was his own coverage at time. Dan Johnson, being the smart receiver that he is, just simply found a dead spot. And I'm pretty impressed with his hands. That ball was a high, hard pass, and Dan was all hands on the catch. The first down of the 28-yard line of New England. Matt Moore in the lineup now, split wide to Marino's left. Marino fires, and Moore is there and splits a pair of New England defenders down near the 10-yard line. Marion finally made the stop. But this is what can happen all night if you do not get pressure on Dan Marino. And it's hard to pressure him when he's throwing that slant in. There's not much you can do about it. Oh, he has such a quick release, too. And it's been stated so many times. He has the best pass-protecting line in the leagues. Dan himself has only been sacked 15 times this year. And true, Dan will throw the ball away. But those quick slanting patterns, you're not going to get to Marino. Duper splits to the left. Mark Clayton goes out right. Moreno likes to throw timing patterns to his wide receivers down here. He gets a one-on-one -on -one situation. He just puts it up for him. Woody Bennett out of the backfield. Roland James up there quickly to put the coverage on Bennett. And Marino once again had a little pressure applied to him by Andre Tippett. Keep an eye on this guy, number 56. A lot of people haven't heard much about him until the All-Star game last year. He had something like 18 and a half sacks from his linebacking position last year, and that's almost an unheard of. He's ended a night with 14 and a half sacks. Lionel, or Leonard Marshall of the Giants has 14 and a half after yesterday. Richard Dent of the Bears has 15. So Tippett will be looking to retake the lead for sacks. Second down and 10. Nathan to the six yard line. Gain of about four yards, it'll be third down and six. Nelson and Don Blackman in there on the stop. Steve Nelson, he's a fiery one. He was thrown out of last week's game against Indianapolis. Look, I remember playing against Steve when he was a rookie. He was with the New England Patriots and I was with the Jets. And I mean, you talk about a fiery player out on that football field. He was awesome. Well, I've, got, I've had the chance to know him over the last 10 or 12 years. He's a fine man off the field. On the field, don't get close to him. And that's so true about so many linebackers. Third and six. Marino, a lot of time. And with all that time, he was finally able to find the tight end. Joe Rose. His fourth touchdown. These tight ends are the Dolphins. They don't catch a lot of balls individually, but Hardy into the night had 33. Johnson had 12. Joe Rose had 18. But when you give a quarterback this much time, and particularly Marino, you're dead. Layton was there. Duper was actually open also. The forecast tonight was for scattered showers, and we are getting one right at the moment. So the Dolphins open the scoring here in the Orange Bowl. Good hands by Don Strock scooping that ball up to get it down as Reves splits the uprights. And the Dolphins lead 7-0 in the rain is coming down here in the Orange Bowl at Miami. 
most people know you can only buy a Curtis Mathis at a Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center. They know delivery and installation are included, and there's a four-year limited warranty on every product. But what people don't know is just how long a Curtis Mathis really lasts. Oh, well, time to get another Curtis Mathis. Yep. For products that last year after year after year, this year, make it a Curtis Mathis Christmas. Thanks for taking me to town for my birthday. Thought we were gonna have lunch. We're doing whatever he wants. I wanna go here. The IBM Product Center? That's where you wanna have lunch? Did I tell you about IBM's wide range of products? You told me we were having Italian food. Look at all these desktop computers. And all these typewriters. Feel Parmesan. And all these different printers. Great quality. Can do charts, even in color. Spaghetti and meatballs. Software for any kind of business need. Speaking of need, what about my stomach? Computers, software, typewriters. I could stay here all day. Me too. Me too. Oh, waiter. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern, an NFL Friday night special. <laughs> Into the night, Marino had been tied with Dan Faust. He now has the lead with 28 touchdown passes this season. Of course, last year in that phenomenal year, 48 touchdown passes, shattering the NFL record. Also passed for over 64% and over 5,000 yards. What a great year. Stephen Starring is back. Starring from the 17-yard line. Big opening. And starring taken out of bounds near the 32-yard line. Davenport made the stop there for Miami. Rain continuing to fall here in the Orange Bowl. It was slippery on the opening kickoff, so it's going to get much more slippery. New England down 7 nothing, 5.57 remaining here in the first quarter. They mark it just inside the 33-yard line. He's upended after a pickup of about six yards out close to the 38-yard line. It'll be second down and three. The Dolphins and the Patriots. The Patriots have not won here since 1966. They've lost 17 in a row. A win tonight, and they win the AFC Eastern Division. For Miami, they need to win tonight and then win right here next week against Buffalo to be assured of an Eastern Division title. Second down and three. Eason is back. Great catch out in the flat by Collins, the leading receiver for the Patriots, but he's short of the first down up near the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and just about three as Hugh Green had moved out there from his right linebacking position to make the stop. Hugh Green couldn't have played that defensively any better. He was right in the middle, and he jumped on Collins there at the right time to break the stop that pass. O.J.? Well, I'm a little surprised by New England's not taking advantage of the center of the field. Jackie Ship is replacing Mark Brown, and if I was going to throw the ball, I'd throw to my back over the middle against those two inside young backers, and not against Hugh Green. From the shotgun. He's with a lot of time. Wide open is the wide receiver. That is Stefan Starring. Starring out of bounds at the 21-yard line with the New England first down. Stephen Starring, who was a college quarterback at McNeese State. Take a look at him. He just split up what appeared to be a zone over there. That's McNeil. He's the nickelback. Obviously not a zone as McNeil let him get by at the line of scrimmage and then tried to run him down, and he couldn't do it. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do. If you're trying to bump a guy at the line of scrimmage, you got to bump him well because... Stephen Starring is a 13-7 high hurdler, so he's got the speed to go deep. First down, New England. Miami's 21-yard line. Fire in motion. Eason again with a lot of time. And this is Collins. And Collins inside the 15-yard line. Twists down around the 13-yard line. 
gain of eight. Jackie Shipp, who started tonight's game, replacing Mark Brown, an inside linebacker, because Mark Brown's ankle would not let him go, made the stop. Jackie Shipp is from Oklahoma. He's a high draft choice last year. He's in his second year. If he has a weakness playing, he doesn't play the pass too well. Of course, in the, that uh, Big A conference, they're running the ball all the time. That was Starring's longest reception of the year. Second down, a long two. James works over the left side. Close to a first down. He had to get to the 11. I believe he's just short of it. James has had a tremendous... Godfather in the American Mafia has been murdered in Manhattan. Paul Castellano was executed, along with his bodyguard, outside an east side restaurant late this afternoon. Lewis Young is... ...is the Federal's first pick in 83. The Patriots' seventh round pick. He joined the Patriots last year. And towards the end of the year, started to show what he could really do. He had... Side of Brzezinski. Well, James showed us a little something there. A lot of people may not have seen him play much this year, but not only is he a smart, hard, instinctive runner inside, the guy has the speed to get outside. He runs a 4 5 40. And he saw that first down marker, got away from Bo Camper, sprinted right to the marker and gets the first down. Debbie Adams, please report to gate 7B. Can you imagine playing against him and Eric Dickerson? <laughs> Down at SMU. Oh, they were a pair, weren't they? James had over 3,700 career yards at SMU as Easton on first down puts it up. Fryer. Beautiful. Beautiful timing. Eason to Fryer. Touchdown. Paul Lankford sprinting with Fryer, but it was absolutely perfectly timed out by Easton and Fryer. Well, they had the ball on the left hash mark that time and had so much football field to work with to the right side. Fryer just ran a sprint pattern, and because of the angle, Lankford couldn't keep up with him. Beautifully thrown pass. He just runs a little fade pattern and uses the football field out here. Lankford's in the chase position from the get-go and just simply can't keep up with him. This play in every team's repertoire really is anytime you get man-for-man -man coverage down there close, you see it almost on every occasion. Tony Franklin to tie it up. Easton places it down, and we have a tied football game. 301 remaining here in the first quarter. And the man with the big play was Stefan Starring. I discovered a place where a whole town plays Santa Claus. It's the season. You're gonna fix that? Sure. It's Maxwell House. Seems whenever coffee tastes this good, good to the last drop, it couldn't be anything but Maxwell House. It couldn't be anything but Maxwell House. Don't settle for second best. Go with number one at the Chevy year-end sales drive. Chevrolet is the best-selling car and truck in America. And your Chevrolet dealer is out to stay number one for the 15th year in a row. We're out to sell 220,000 cars and trucks before the end of the year. Don't settle for second best. And here's more good news. Chevy announces low 8.5% financing on any new Cavalier. Go with number one. See your Chevy dealer now. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No, a car loan, Leona. Fast forward. Home improvement loan. Hey. It's a General Motors car. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck. Get GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around here? Do we have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a pretty calendar. If I can only find that only. Sunday Richard Pryor is the ultimate gift in the toy. It doesn't even need batteries. Tony Eason timing one out with Pryor. Patriots on the scoreboard. The game tied at seven. And Eason, very calm, very cool, Joe. Yeah, you know, that's the question for me again tonight is, is this man going to be able to handle the kind of pressure he's confronted with? Certainly in the first series when he threw that interception, it didn't look like it, but he's uh, looked a lot better in his last series. Franklin puts it up. Lorenzo Hampton at the four-yard line. 
And Hampton had to get away from the wedge that had been set up at midfield, and he's taken out of bounds up close to the 20-yard line. I want to remind you, live from Virginia Beach, Virginia, except on the West Coast, Saturday on ABC Wide World of Sports, America's Olympic boxing medalists continue to battle in the pro ranks. Mark Breland, Tyrell Biggs, and Evander Holyfield, all undefeated, will fight live, except on the West Coast. The exciting action begins Saturday at a special time, 4 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 3 o'clock Central. Breland's record, 7-0, with four KOs. Biggs, pro record, 6-0. Holyfield's pro record, 7-0. He has four KOs. And Lyle Blackwood is the injured Miami Dolphin. Lyle Blackwood, the veteran out of Texas Christian, being attended by the medical staff of the Dolphins. When you start something good, everyone wants a piece of it. Take light beer from Miller. Now there's lots of light beers out there saying they're less filling. Heck, that was the easy part. The hard part is brewing a light beer that tastes great. That's why light's always brewed only with the finest ingredients. To let all that great beer taste come through for guys like you and me. The taste that's made light beer for Miller, America's favorite light beer. Hey, I always thought it was easy opening cans. <laughs> VHS video camera. And recorder. Oh, uh, well, it's so big. It's a lot more than I uh, expected. This year, bigger isn't better. That's why Sony invented the Handycam. It's so little. A video camera recorder so tiny. Wow. It fits in one hand. Just point and shoot to capture two hours of rich color. Very good. Vivid sound on one tiny video cassette. Oh, it's a hat. Then play it back on his little handy cam deck. You can even copy what you've shot on VHS or beta. Christmas comes just once a year, but the memories can last forever. So instead of a big bulky gift, give a new Sony handy cam. The little gift that'll go over in a big way. This is the best Christmas ever. <laughs> The Gator Bowl, December 30th. Florida State tangles with Thurman Thomas and Oklahoma State. The Sugar Bowl, January 1st. Second ranked Miami with hopes of a national championship meets number eight Tennessee only on ABC. While we were away, Lyle Blackwood walked off the field unassisted. He appeared to be just shaken up. He was in the middle of that wedge, and that's a good place to get really shaken. Yeah, that's no place for a man 34 to be in the middle of a wedge. There are the brothers Blackwood. The Dolphins have a first down and 10, the ball at the 20-yard line. Bennett and Hampton, the setbacks. Bennett, 34. Hampton, 27. The rookie first-round draft pick out of Florida. This is Hampton. Ooh, and he is hit from behind hard by Don Blackman, who is having really a great year for New England, but you don't hear that much about Blackman because of the play of Andre Tripp Tippett. Tippett, of course, used much like Lawrence Taylor by New England. They move him all around, and he has incredible athletic skill. But Don Blackman just quietly is having a great year of his own. A loss in the play of one. It'll be second down and 11. Nathan back in the backfield now for the Dolphins. Marino, a great effort by Marino to get the ball to Duper under pressure, and Duper does not handle the ball, and you can see the rain continuing to fall. That ball has to be slippery. Yeah, it was a pretty well-thrown pass. New England that time moved their left defensive end all the way to the other side and put old Andre Tippett down in the three-point stance, and they tried to get to Marino with a four-man rush, but Dan still read the defense. He threw it to the right spot, and old Duke just couldn't hold on to it. Third down and 11. Clayton is split right. Duper goes left along with Matt Moore. Marino, again with a lot of time, gets the ball upfield and gets it to Matt Moore, who's having a great year for the Dolphins. You hear so much about Duper and Clayton. But for Matt Moore, that's his 47th reception of the season, and it was a key one as he gets the Dolphins from deep in their own territory. Well, you know, whenever New England go, I mean, the Miami go to three wide receivers, Marino is going to be looking for Nat Moore. Majority of the time, he's going to have a safety trying to cover him one-on-one -on -one instead of a cornerback. So he's the man that should get open. 
First down and 10. Reno and Moore get it out to the 33 yard line. Woody Bennett. Bennett breaks it back against the grain. He'll get five out of it. It'll be second down and five. Friday night, special time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Denver and Seattle. Denver needs to win on Friday night to retain any hope of a wild card spot. If Denver loses on Friday, all three AFC East teams, the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Patriots, are assured of playoff spots. To make the playoffs as a wild card, Denver must win on Friday, and one of two other events must happen. Either the Jets lose to Cleveland Sunday, or tonight's loser loses again on Sunday. Lots of implications involving the AFC candidates. Denver and Seattle on Friday night. Second down and five. Reno. Clayton. There was bumping between Ronnie Lippett. Clayton had let up a little bit on Marino. And Marino looked deep. And he unleashed one that traveled about 45 or 50 yards in the air. And both of them kind of misjudged the ball. Again, we mentioned the wind earlier. Not a lot of wind right now. But the ball wasn't a good release. Actually, it slipped out of Dan's hand. But Clayton should have caught the pass. It hits him in both hands right here. You can see our defender, Ronnie Lippert, just jumping a hair early. And the ball hits both hands right here. <laughs> Boy, I know Mark would like to have that one over again. 29 seconds remaining in the first quarter. We are tied at seven, third down and five from Miami. They have the ball at their own 38-yard line. Tony Nathan, single set back. Marino from the shotgun. And off the fingertips of Tony Nathan. He tried to sneak out in the flat. Took a little delay like he was going to stay in and block, and then he tried to sneak it out in the flat, and Don Blackman was right with him. Well, one thing we're seeing is the fact that Marino's had two of his worst percentage-wise games against this New England team, and it's obvious the reason to because New England is an excellent man-to-man -man coverage team. They've got the linebackers to stay with the backs and the tight ends, and the cornerbacks who can stay with those wide receivers. And they're still going to have to get pressure on Dan to be able to stop the passing attack. Irving Fryer, he'll give you a thrill. Second to Louis Lips, the AFC returning punts into tonight. But again, he had the, that 85-yarder against Buffalo, a 77-yarder against the Colts. Both for touchdowns earlier this year. Roby line drives it to the nine-yard line. And Fryer doing his playing once again, out close to the 30-yard line before he's tripped up by Bud Brown. 53-yard effort by Roby, a low punt, however that Fryer was able to bring back 20 yards. I think the weather had a lot to do with Fryer possibly not breaking that run because normally he would have made a sharp cut up field, but once he got to the far side of the field, he had to slow down. He appeared to be worrying about his footing before he turned up field. Yeah, with that punt return unit for New England, they do a great job for Fryer. That's twice now they've had a good picket line set up for him, and he has almost popped it all the way. First and 10 New England, their own 29-yard line. Eason back. Rifles his shot, it's complete to Stanley Morgan. And the veteran from Tennessee comes down at the 49-yard line as we run out of time here in the first quarter. So much on the line, so much excitement here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. We'll be back with setter second quarter action in just a moment. First Chevy truck, Vortec muscle, V8 hustle. Chevy has V8s available up to a big 454 with unbeatable power and a full-size pickup. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Go with number one at the Chevy year-end sales drive. We're out to sell 220,000 cars and trucks by year's end. And check out our specially equipped full-size pickups. Save up to $740, up to $705 on S10 Blazers. See your Chevy dealer now. It's Don Shula, the winningest coach in the NFL, admired and respected by millions. Sure, winning is important on the field, but winning is also important in the home, in the community. The National Football League is concerned not only about professional football, but they're also concerned about you and I in the community. Contrary to what people believe, a lot of good things do happen in Miami. Uh, it's, a, it's a city where people have come, they've migrated there and uh, they've been able to establish a new life. Uh, families that have been broken have been able to get it back together. There have been community services, such as United Way, that have 
been able to help these people get back on track and, and to make it and to start a new life and to realize that dream that they had when they came to Miami. That's why I have such faith in United Way. It gives to all different types of families, regardless of race, creed, or color. It's there to help the needy, and that's what's important to me. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. Frank Gifford, along with Joe Namath and O.J. Simpson, watching the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. And over the years, the New England Patriots have suffered dearly here in the Orange Bowl. 17 consecutive games they have lost. They did win here in Florida, the state of Florida, in a game that was played in 1969 up at Tampa. But the last time they won here in the Orange Bowl was 1966. And if they can win tonight... They will be the AFC Eastern Division champions. We begin the second quarter. We're tied at seven. The Patriots have a first and ten there at the Dolphins 49-yard line. Play action by Eason. That is wide open and trying to get it deep, trying to get it to Starring. Incomplete. Incomplete. And again, Starring goes down on what appears to be a very slippery field. And again, having handled a wet, a wet ball many, many times, I know a quarterback just is not going to pass the football as accurately as he would with a dry football. That last play, he was open. Starring was open. There wasn't a man around him for five yards, seven yards. And Tony just couldn't get the ball to him. He had a slip out of his hand. Second and ten. Eason back once again. Fires a shot into... Cedric Jones, or rather Tony Collins. Collins made a diving effort and ruled incomplete. Let's take a look at the stats from the first quarter. New England had a couple of big plays. One of them to Starring to set up their first touchdown. They were moving the ball well on the ground, and they all of a sudden have gotten away from it. I Again, agree, Frank. Well, the only reason I could figure that out is that Miami expects them to run the football, so they're playing their linebackers a little tighter on the defensive line, so there should be more room downfield for the passing game. And, of course, now the Patriots are looking at third and ten. Eason from the shotgun. Flag is down, and whistles are blown. New England's entire offensive line appeared to have a rolling start. <laughs> well, they had to pick someone, so they picked out John Hanna. The entire line was moving. There's Big John. Eight Pro Bowls for this man, now in his 13th year. And still about as good as they come. New England is backed up near their own 46-yard line. If you look at Hall of Fame receiver Raymond Berry, who came in to the world of professional football when Don Shula was playing for the Baltimore Colts back in 54. Later, when Don Shula became the head coach in 1963, was a player for Don Shula. A close relationship between the two. Third down and 15. James is in the flat and he holds on and slips at the 45-yard line. He goes down short of the first down. Paul Langford was out there defensively for Miami. But we will see the punting unit once again. Camarillo comes on, averaging a little over 43 yards on his punts, a 33.7 net. Vigarito drops for the Miami Dolphins. Here's a look at Tommy Vigarito. He missed all of last year with a bad knee, was activated only a few weeks ago. the bounce that New England could have killed inside the five. It's a touchback, however. The Dolphins ball at their own 20. You don't get to the top by looking back. You go for it. With all the power you can muster. All the confidence. All the poise. And you know that when you finally make your move, you're going to go all the way. Cavalier. 
for people who know exactly where they're going. And from now to the end of the year, get 8.5% financing on a new Cavalier. Well, I finally did it. I've given up this surfing life and gone out and gotten a real job. You can do it, Corky. Whoa. And to celebrate my pals here, sending me off with a little party and some light beer from Miller. Light's taste is way cool, and it's less filling. And I can't afford to get filled up because I've got to go to work tomorrow. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. See you later, Corky. Yeah, it's a tough job. Someone's got to do it. Introducing a new, longer-lasting Energizer. The new Energizer AA battery. It's supercharged. Now radios play 14 hours longer than before. It's supercharged. No battery in the world outlasts it. When you've got to go in ice and snow, you're going to go with Prestone. Driving just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze can leave a radiator looking this bad, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. America goes with Prestone. Undefeated Olympic heroes fight on. Mark Freeland, Tyrell Biggs, and Evander Holyfield Pro Fights. Live on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday. A sellout crowd, but they have been dampened somewhat, but certainly not their spirits. A couple of weeks ago, they were deafening here in the Orange Bowl. Maybe they're still recovering from that bear game. Now they're on their feet. As the Dolphins have a first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Could be changing it up. Works inside to Nathan. And Nathan, close to a first down, out of the 30-yard line. Andre Tippett is there. He's all over the football field. They'll mark it inside the 30 to 29, so it'll be a gain of nine, second down and one. I'm a little surprised to see the Miami Dolphins running the ball so much on first down. They didn't have much success early, but they're sticking with it. And this was a good gainer. It's a good possibility the way Marino was calling the signals that time. He saw a hole in that defense and audibleized to the run. Second down and a little less than a yard for the first down. Bennett. And Bennett has the first down. He's out over the 35-yard line. Tripped up there by Claiborne. Former... New York Jet. He was a free agent in 81. They've been drafting running backs ever since he got here, and they still haven't got him out of the backfield. Raymond Claiborne, he has really done a job out on that corner. Ronnie Lippett over in the other corner has struggled. He, of course, was the man who replaced Mike Haynes when he went to the Raiders. But the defense has gradually emerged as one of the strong defenses in the NFL, this New England major defense. Reno back on first down. Again, a lot of time, but this time he just has to throw it away. All receivers were covered. Clayton had been picked up and was well covered by Raymond Claiborne. And you know, that's one of the things. I, we keep pointing to the fact that Marino's only been sacked 15 times. Right there was obvious. Dan will throw that ball away more than most quarterbacks around the league. He knows he's not a good scrambler, so he'll very rarely look to run around with the football back there. Throw it away and say, all right, I'll come back in second and 10 or third and six rather than second, 17 or 18. You know, Joe, the thing that has amazed me about him is his ability to recognize when he's got to throw it away. There's a great sense about that to be the fourth consecutive year the Dolphins have led the league in fewest sacks. Second down and 10 for Marino. Drills one in, it's complete to Duper. Duper at midfield for a Dolphin first down. Lippett was trying to stay with him. Let's pick up Duper again. Lippett on the outside. Duper gave him a little move like he was going to take it upfield. Broke it square off and you can see the slippery field once again. Lippett. Slipping and sliding, and he could not get back to Duper. And in the first game, November the 3rd, it was the, the man you saw a moment ago, Mark Duper, who was unavailable. That hairline fracture that he had in the leg that kept him out much of the season. New England, of course, the winners of that game, 17-13. First and 10 at midfield for Miami. Oh, boy. And... A great effort by Nathan. A great effort to keep that ball out of the hands of Don Blackman. I think Marino was trying to throw it away and it just got <laughs> underthrown on him. I don't know what he was looking at that time. There were two defenders there. 
That had plenty of protection. Couldn't find the receiver. And I don't know why he threw the ball. Maybe he was trying to throw it away, but this should have been picked off. Dan's backing away a little bit too fast as he's throwing the football. Look at Nathan, though, Joe. They had a Pro Bowl player for unsung heroes. He would have to be in number one in my book. He just does everything for the Dolphins, and he does it all right. And you know he has a career average of 4.8 yards per rush. That's pretty remarkable in itself. It sure is. Second down and 10. Inside. That's Carter. Joe Carter, who has not seen much action this year. That was his second attempt thus far of the season. Had a couple of big games for the Dolphins a, a year ago. Fourth round draft pick last year. And he just was not able to get back into the lineup, or the lineup that Don Shula wanted to have in there surrounding Marino. Well, Joe, you, you spoke of Tony Nathan averaging 4.8 uh, yards a carry. Joe Carter has five. It just tells you, without Marino, if they were forced to run the football, Miami could have a 1,000-yard runner easily. They're down and three. The Dolphins inside the 43-yard line of the Patriots. Marino from the shotgun. Drills one deep downfield. Nobody holds on to a football better than Matt Moore. He knew he was going to get powdered, and he did by Fred Marion. A flag is down. The Dolphins indicating that it's going to work against New England, and it does. Coach Don. Number 55, he says, he saw. Blackman was holding defensively for New England. The penalty declined. And let's take a look at a wide shot of that secondary. Marino was looking deep. He was looking for Duper, top of your screen. Had to come back underneath, fired it to Nat Moore. Moore knew he was going to get hit. Held on to the football, and I recall that shot he took a year ago by the Jets when he was absolutely helicoptered and still managed to hold on to the football and a key play in that game. First and 10, Miami. 23-yard line of New England. Joe Carter once again, a big opening. And so taken from behind. McGrew with a fine stop to hold Carter to a gain of about three yards. Now they mark it at the about the 17-yard line, so give him five. It'll be second down at five, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. This is WABC TV, Channel 7 in New York. The clock is moving with less than 10 minutes remaining in the first half. The Miami Dolphins and New England Patriots are tied at seven in the Orange Bowl, a damp Orange Bowl here in Miami. New England a win tonight. They are the AFC Eastern Division champions. The Dolphins would need to win tonight and next week to assure them the Eastern Division. Marino goes down. Andre Tippett gets his 15th and a half sack. He is now the leader in the NFL once again in sacks. New England did an excellent job on defense. They had both Carter and Nathan in the game. I think he wanted to go to one of his backs. He figured if they blitzed, one of the guys should be open, but they jumped on both of those backs coming out of the backfield, and Andre Tippett comes in and gets his 15th sack. Yeah, and the reason he did was Ronnie Lee, the right tackle, and Steve Clark, the right guard, forgot who they were supposed to block. Neither one of them got out there on Tippett, and I promise you, one of them was assigned to him. It was an eight-yard loss. It'll be third down and 14 as Moreno quickly sets up in the shotgun. Matt Moore, top of your screen. And Marino trying to time it out to Joe Rose, the tight end, who's complaining bitterly that he was held by Ronnie Lippett. Well, he might have had a valid complaint. But it falls on deaf ears, and we're going to see Reves come into the lineup. Rod Reves. Rookie seventh round pick out of Tennessee is 19 of 24. His long field goal of the season, 47 yards, but at Tennessee, he put one through the uprights from 60 yards out. New England defense is tough. You got to give him credit for stopping the Dolphins in this drive. Big year thus far for Reves. 100 points into the night. Strack gets it down. And Reves unties it. IBM presents You Make the Call. From the shotgun, Jim McMahon of the Bears hands forward to Walter Payton, who runs right and passes back to the quarterback for an apparent touchdown. Now, you make the call. Is this a touchdown? 
When you're dealing with higher volumes of information and need answers fast, you search everywhere for solutions, but find it hard to get on top of things. That's why IBM created the personal computer AT with the power to push high performance even higher. With the AT, fast becomes faster, and the capacity to handle data becomes greater, all to help put your business on solid ground. The IBM Personal Computer AT for advanced technology. What call did you make? In the T formation, a quarterback is not an eligible receiver. But in the shotgun, he is eligible. And therefore, this is a touchdown for the Bears. Can any new size passenger van let you tow up to 5,000 pounds? Meet Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. With more fuel-injected V6 Go, there's more power for you to tow. The only new size passenger van that lets you tow up to 5,000 pounds is Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Astro. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern and NFL Friday Night Special. Remember, a special time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Denver, of course, needs to win on Friday night to retain any hope of a wild card spot. To make the playoffs as a wild card, Denver must win on Friday, and one of two other events must happen later. Either the Jets lose to Cleveland Sunday, or tonight's loser loses again on Sunday. Long shot out there for Danny Reeves and his troops. Stephen Starring is deep. Quad Reves kicks off for Miami. Starring. Now he'll stay in the end zone. New England's ball at the 20-yard line, and we will leave Seattle. We'll go to Los Angeles, where we'll watch the Rams and the Raiders. Both teams, of course, have already clinched their divisional titles. The Raiders, however, may need a win to clinch the home field privilege throughout the AFC playoffs. Now, if the Dolphins win tonight, they win against Buffalo next week, and the Raiders should lose to the Rams, well, the Dolphins will be insured of home field privileges all the way through the playoffs. The Rams, by the way, may need a win to avoid opening the playoffs on the road, depending upon the 49er Dallas game. First and 10, New England. This is the one we're interested in in a moment. Craig James. Very busy feet, Craig James. Just keeps pumping, churning, and looking. A very heady runner. He yep. out to a three-yard pickup. It'll be second down and seven. Talking about great runners, you know, you think about Dickinson and Marcus Allen. It was just two weeks ago we were here, and we saw Walter Payton set a league record for nine straight 100-yard games. Do you know if Marcus Allen runs for 100 yards next Monday, he would have tied Walter Payton's record for nine straight 100-yard games? And the Jets stop Walter this week. Second down and seven. Tony Collins. The ball comes loose. Paul Lightford put the hit on Collins, but the fumble is out of bounds, and New England will retain possession. Lankford, who has filled in over the past couple of years for an often injured Don McNeil, has they turned into quite a cornerback. I think the defensive people with the Dolphins or Don Shula would like to have McNeil in there, but first it's a knee, then an Achilles, then another knee, and right now McNeil is back semi-healthy and being used as a nickelback, and Lankford stays on at the cornerback. Third down and seven, and the 12th man, the crowd here in the Orange Bowl, gets into it. away or was his arm hit Tony Eason covers his own football he started to throw the ball downfield changed his mind came out of his hands and he was able to make the recovery at the 14 yard line so that brings out Camarillo once again Rich Camarillo and Tommy Vigorito drops back to the Dolphins and the Dolphins should get good field position with 7.30 in the clock moving, remaining here in the first half. Dolphins had an interesting defense the last time. Two down linemen and five linebackers. Four of the linebackers rushed. A low snap. Camarillo fields it and then hangs one up high. Figueroa will have time at his 43-yard line. And it's Figueredo to midfield, hit there by Johnny Rembert. So the Dolphins have great field position. They're at midfield. We'll be back in just a moment. Field. Celebrity Eurosport. 
something more from today's Chevrolet. Celebrity Eurosport. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. Celebrity. Driven 10 hours a week, this toy could use $500 worth of alkaline batteries. Because when an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away. This is a GE Rechargeable. When it goes dead, you don't throw it away. You do something revolutionary. You recharge it. So why spend $500 for alkaline batteries when you could spend less than $15 for two GE Rechargeable batteries and a charger? GE, You know, I don't like being disappointed. Why, one time we lost a big game and I felt so bad, I sawed my car in half. That's why they call me Hacksaw. But now I take it easy and I drink light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than their regular beer and it's less filling. And the taste never lets me down. Hey, how about another light beer? Uh, sorry, Hacksaw, we uh, just, just ran out. Boy, that's very disappointing. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. College football scandals and the crackdown on those who play for pay on 2020 Thursday. Tonight's game here at the Orange Bowl is being dedicated by the Miami Dolphins to the son of Nick Bonacani, the all-pro player and a member of that 72 undefeated Dolphin team that went 17-0. Mark, of course, playing for Citadel earlier this year, suffered a serious spinal cord entry. He's in nearby Jackson Hospital, but funds are being raised here tonight by the NFL alumni. They are selling T-shirts. And funds are being taken at the gate as people have come in tonight to fund the University of Miami project for paralysis. And Nick Bonacani has declared war on paralysis and is beginning in the name of his son, Mark. And we wish him well and we wish Mark well. On first and ten, the Dolphins at midfield. Tony Nathan. <laughs> tip it in there first on the hit. Well, they got the ball out of Tony Nathan's hand, but Mark Duper was right there. The ball looked as if it popped right into his hand. Take a look at it. You see it from the reverse angle. Not a good view a moment ago from the opposite side of the field. And here is Nathan carrying it a little bit loose. Tippett just stuck an arm in there, took it away. The ball went right into Duper's hands. And it's also first down yardage. So the Dolphins got one that bounces their way. Miami, first and ten, New England's 40-yard line. Joe Carter, number 23, in there with Woody Bennett, the setback for the Dolphins. This is Carter. Carter inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 21 as Fred Marion gave him a ride, but it's another Miami first down, and Miami surprisingly strong tonight running the football. Well, the key block on that play, believe it or not, was number 89, Nat Moore. Nat Moore lined up outside. You'll see him coming into the screen. He'll hit number 50. That's Nat Moore. You just saw him. He got a great crackback block. Gave Carter the room to run. Carter's quite a, an explosive runner. Reminds me a little of Mercury Morris. Yeah, and he can catch the ball, too, coming out of the backfield. 19-yard pickup. 31 yards thus far for Carter. First and ten, the Dolphins. They're at the 21-yard line of New England. Carter again. And he carries to the 15 before he's hit by Marion once again. A gain of six. It'll be second down and four. I tell you, they're doing a job up, block, up front blocking, and it's a, I guess it's a testimony to John Sandusky, the job he's done with this team, a league low, 16 sacks now after the night. The job they're doing blocking with the line problems that he's had with injuries. And we would like to wish all our best and our, offer our sympathy to the family of John Sandusky, his wife, Ruth, dying suddenly last night here in the Miami area. Don is not on the sidelines as he ordinarily would be, of course. He ordinarily stands by Don Shula. Second down and five Dolphins. And again, Marino has to throw one away. Yes. You know, another reason this running game the Dolphins uh, have tonight is working is because of play selection. This game still has a lot to do with strategy. We pointed out earlier why run a draw play when you haven't thought of forward 
pass yet. Uh, it didn't work. Coach Schuller knows that this New England defense is going to be playing pass most of the time, and he's made some beautiful calls in the running game, and I think that's why they work. New England's been playing pass, and the Dolphins have crossed them up. Third down and five. Marino brings them up. They'll work from the shotgun. Nathan again. A dangerous receiver out of the backfield. The tight end now is Joe Rose. Fine receiver. And, of course, Duper Moore and Clayton. Marino fires a shot. It's complete. Each of the Pat Moore is having a big night as Moore will get a first down on the 10-yard line right in front of Ernest Gibson. And that Moore, again, Coach Shula says the bigger the game, the better this man plays. He likens him to Charlie Joyner. He says his awareness on the football field is so good, similar to Charlie Joyner's. He knows where he's going. He knows how to get the first down yardage. He'll get just a yard beyond the first down mark and make the first down. And he's also the leader of this receiving corps. Mark Duper, Mark Clayton, Tommy Vigorito. This man right here, Nat Moore, is their leader. He gets the big tough one. The first down receiver. He now has 51 on the season. That's his best since 1980. First down, Woody Bennett. And Bennett crumbles outside, tries to reach into the end zone, doesn't get there. It was Claiborne who took Bennett out of bounds. He's down close to the one-yard line. Boy, they're doing a job. John Giesler had a tough block. His block, he had to block Don Blackman, an outside linebacker. You have to not only block him, you have to turn him to the inside, and that outside linebacker lined up outside of him. Well, he made the block, and he allowed the runner to get outside, nine yards down to the one. Giesler is one of those offensive linemen that has been wounded all season. He's playing on sheer guts tonight. He has a bad knee, he has a sore ankle, he has a couple of broken bones in his hand. Number 79, John Giesler, left tackle for the Dolphins. Davenport is in. They usually go with him, but this time, yes, that is Davenport. They like to use him down close. This time they hold him short of the end zone. Into the night. Inside the five yard line, Davenport has had 10 attempts and eight touchdowns. Dolphin fans thought he had it this time. Well, 8 out of 11 is not bad. I got a feeling he should get the opportunity to make it uh, 9 out of 12. Sixth round draft pick out of Louisville. And the rookie, Ron Davenport. I remember three years ago, and they took another player out of Louisville named Mark Clayton. Got him in the eighth round. Third down. Davenport, touchdown Miami, and they take the lead. Davenport, and where do they go? Right over the left side behind Foster and Giesler. You know he's coming. There's not a whole lot you can do about it when your line is firing off. And Davenport giving the Dolphins the lead once again. Well, I know their right defensive end, Julius Adams, is the leader of their defense. However, he's also the oldest lineman in the NFL at 37, and his age may be taking a toll tonight. It looks like they're running the football right at Julius' side. Reveille's now for the conversion. Strock nails it down. Through. And the Dolphins take a 17 to 7 lead. Friday night, we're going to be up to the King Dome in Seattle. Denver Broncos making Custer's last stand, if you will, against the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks will be very loose. They are out of it. But Denver, a very important game for them. It's the only possible hope that they have. That is a victory in Seattle trying to stay alive and wait to find out what's going to happen on Sunday. What's interesting is when this season began, you would have thought nine games would have been uh, an excellent shot of being one of the wild card teams. And you look at Denver, there's a chance that they can win 11 games and still not be one of the wild card teams. <laughs> Just one of those years when the AFC East had New England. They had Miami, they had the Jets. And of course, the AFC West had the Raiders. Did this not come out of Houston? 
Houston Oilers, you were number one. Well, I guess they figured that was so long ago that no one remembers. So uh, Miami was right. Well, we remember. <laughs> Miami was there in a great game in 1978. Miami played Houston when they broke that song out. Big night for Bob Greasy, big night for Earl Campbell, and Houston won it. I would call that definite copyright infringement. <laughs> Reveille bangs it. Starring from the one yard line. Starring out of bounds. Starring. Up near the 27 yard line, Lyle Blackwood was in on that play defensively for the Miami Dolphins. You're down 17 to 7. Your basic game is a running game. What do you do, Joe? I think they're going to have to stick with the running game some. There's still plenty of time left in this football game, and really Miami hasn't proven they can stop the running game yet. I just think New England has been up a little bit with their play selections. They have to go back with what works best for them on first down and not try to throw the football as often as they have been on first down. In their previous win over the Dolphins November the 3rd, they ran for 203 yards. On first and 10, Easton is back. Goes underneath, and Craig James took his eyes off that football looking downfield before it got there. Hugh Green was right with him. There's Nick Bonacani. Now, of course, a very successful practicing attorney. And no one really knows the pain and the anguish that he has been going through over the past few months. And we certainly wish him the best. We wish his son Mark the best. A quadriplegic after a, an accident earlier this year playing football for Citadel. But he's not sitting around feeling sorry for himself. He's doing something about it. He has an ongoing battle against paralysis. Eason back again. He is leveled by Charles. The nose tackle, Mike Charles, who gets an inordinate amount of sacks from that position. That's his sixth of the season. Third year man out of Syracuse, who was injured a year ago, had a very bad knee, had actually taken over as defensive right end for the Dolphins when he suffered that knee injury. He's right on the center. Watch him. Good move, beating Guy Morris. Then he gets away from Wooten. And he just leveled Eason back near the 16-yard line. Third down and 20. Proud chanting defense. Eason almost leveled again. Gets away from the safety. And fires a shot. Yes, it's complete. Brilliant play by Tony Eason. To Pryor. Are they going to give it to him? No. No. But it was a great effort. That was a good effort by Eason. Starting with the catch of the snap, first of all. That's the second low snap that he's had to contend with. It made a nice catch. He keeps his presence about him here. This is the one thing that worried the Dolphins. He's not as pre predictable back in the pocket as Grogan. But on the other hand, last year, he set a National Football League record by being sacked 59 times. Oh, so close, but out of bounds. Ooh. Yes, sir. And they were busy complaining, all the Patriots, that Fryer had been inbound. They do not get it. Camarillo is on the punt. Figueredo, again, at the 40-yard line of the Dolphins, and the Dolphins should again have it back in good field position. Camarillo with a fine punt. Hangs it up there. Figueredo at the 37. Figueredo back out near the 48-yard line of the Dolphins. We have 214 remaining in the first half. 46-yard putt by Camarillo and a nine-yard return. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. And Dan Marino, who has been sacked once tonight, but on most occasions, he's had plenty of time to throw the football. Interesting piece coming up at halftime about where Monday Night Football travels around the world. We think you'll enjoy that. Halftime highlights. A Further look at the standings with one game remaining here in the 85 NFL season. So stick around. First and 10 Miami. They have marked it just inside the Dolphins 48 yard line. Nathan, draw play. Works to the 49 yard line. He'll get close to three yards out of that. We'll call a second down and seven as we will tick off down to the two-minute warning. So much on the line tonight between New England and the Miami Dolphins. And we'll be back with the final two minutes of the first half of the moment. 
Hello. Ed has finally got his Christmas poem done, and I would like to read it to you. It is once again that time of year to enjoy a little Christmas cheer. And so with all the cooler names, we're glad you've remembered Bartles and James. For your continued support, we give our thanks. Have a real nice holiday. Signed, Ed and Frank. I hope this is not too sentimental. Ed tends to choke up a lot at Christmas. Anyway, enjoy the holidays, and we will see you soon. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. This year, I needed to give a real family pleaser. Honey, please help me with this budget. How about a new game, Dad? Please. And I found it. Radio Shack's Color Computer 2. On sale for just $88. It entertains, educates, manages. It's expandable and affordable. Now that really pleases me. The Color Computer 2. Sale price for Christmas. Only at Radio Shack. Hamburger places serve billions of burgers. And oh yes, they also serve chicken, like chicken nuggets. But it's hard to do chicken right. Part time. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, our nuggets have our secret blend of 11 herbs and spices, so they taste great. In fact, people who said they never tried Kentucky Nuggets and McDonald's Chicken Nuggets rated ours higher on taste. So get your nuggets from the chicken experts. Anything else could be a bum steer. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern and NFL Friday Night Special. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Frank Gifford along with O.J. Simpson, Joe Namath. Watching a very unusual football game. There's been some dynamite hitting. We've had several turnovers. The New England Patriots seemingly doing everything right. Things are just not quite clicking for them, however. And the Dolphins have a 17-7 lead. And they also have... The second down and seven. They're new at New England's 49-yard line. There is Ray Berry. Over 600 receptions, nearly 10,000 yards, 68 career touchdowns. I remember 12 of them in 1958 against the Giants, the first sudden death game. He caught 12 passes from Johnny Unitas that day for 178 yards, and they beat us in overtime. Second down and seven. Got to Nat Moore. Pump faked it when Moore wasn't quite open. Still had the time and the presence to get the ball to Moore for another Dolphin first down inside the 40-yard line of New England. Yards. I tell you, that's 52 receptions for Nat Moore. His best he's ever had was 52 receptions, and he went to the Pro Bowl that year. Shows how differently this game is played today. First and 10, 39-yard line. coming down with it, Nat Moore. Juggled it down the sidelines, and he couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh, he wanted that bat. He's having a tremendous first half. Can you imagine 52 receptions would get you into the Pro Bowl just five, six years ago in the day? You're just the third receiver on your team. Look at that great adjustment to the ball. Just couldn't hold on to it. Moreno, by the way, has 102 yards thus far here in the first half. He came into tonight leading 191 yards for his second consecutive 4,000-yard-plus season. Now, Fouts is the only other NFL player that has had a 4,000-yard season consecutively. Moreno looking for it tonight, and he should get it in the second half. Carter and Joe Carter. Spins down close to the 35-yard line, a gain of almost four. It'll be third down and six, and the Dolphins will use one of their timeouts. They still have two remaining. And Marino will move over. You see Don Shula, who always has Don Strock standing close by. Don Strock, one of the finer backup quarterbacks. That's Don Strock with the baseball cap on. Don Strock also calls a lot of plays. We might also touch on another interesting thing that happened here today. David Shulip revealed that he had indeed been contacted by Norman Freeman, the owner of the Eagles, who also announced today that they had fired Marion Campbell. Campbell and the Eagles 6-9 and nine this year, but David Shula had an impromptu 
press conference and said there had been nothing concrete made. They had agreed to get back together once again. I wonder if he told you to take a lap, you would take a lap, or would you want to pick him up and burp him? <laughs> That'd be something, you, especially if you're a guy like Julius Adams, like I was 37 in the league, and your coach is, you know, 11 years younger than you are. This guy's 26 years old. <laughs> he had a remarkable collegiate career up at Dartmouth with uh, Jeff Kemp. The backup quarterback out with the Rams. They broke all kinds of records up there. And for Marion Campbell, uh, the old swamp box, he'll turn up somewhere. There's a lot of football savvy remaining in that man. Third down and seven for the Dolphins. 115 remaining here in the first half. Dolphins leading the Patriots 17 to 7. Marino again with a lot of time. Fires it complete, gets it to Duper, and Duper has first down yardy in front of Raymond Claiborne. They have given Claiborne the unenviable assignment of covering him man for man, and you have just got to lay off Mark Duper. He has that quick speed. He doesn't have the blazing speed of Mark Clayton. Well, he does, too, for crying out loud. They're both just outrageously fast on the outside, but you just have to give him the room when you are single coveraging. Joe Carter stays in the setback. Then when you give him the room, Marino will throw that quick slant pass on you and hit you underneath. They work to Carter underneath, and Carter is hit behind the line of scrimmage. First man there knows his tackle, Lester Williams. Bach ticking away inside one minute. Dolphins are comfortable, however. They have two timeouts. Second down and 11. Marino finally had to unload it. He was really hit by Garen Barris. He was really hit right in the back just as he released the ball. And that is a very good example of Dan getting rid of the ball to avoid the loss. Had he held it, he'd have been sacked at the 40-yard line, which would have taken him out of field goal position and possible touchdown position. This is Garen Ferris. He's an interesting case. He's a uh, rookie this year. They say he is slow. He runs uh, over five seconds for the 40-yard dash, but he has nine sacks. Nine sacks for a rookie, and in the beginning of the season, he was sharing that position with Ken Sims, so that's quite impressive. Ken that's Sims, there he is. gone with a broken fibula, and now Barris taking up the slack. Barris, the second-round draft pick out of Stanford. It's third down and 11 for the Dolphins. They have 42 seconds. <laughs> Marino, the ball is loose. And it's still loose. And New England's going to get it back. Andre Tippett knocked it out of there. Tippett came all the way from behind Marino. Marino, I don't think he even saw him. And he knocks it loose, and Varis comes up with the recovery. Reverse angle, you see it. Not a bad block by Ronnie Lee on Tippett. Took him outside, then Marino kind of drifted out to the right. And Tippett, heads up play, strips the ball. And Varis was there for the recovery. Now for New England. They have 33 seconds. They have three timeouts remaining. They have a first and 10, the ball at their own 34-yard line. And they want some points. Eason back in the shotgun. Eason looking deep. Down with the ball is Morgan. And more than that, he goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line, stopping the clock with 26 seconds. Fine pass Eason to Stanley Morgan. What a career he's had. Went over 7,000 yards last week for his career. As we look at it again, lots of time for Eason. Yes, as Stanley just runs a little corner pattern, falls right in between two defenders there in the hole. Perfectly thrown pass. Ball is marked inside the 39-yard line of the Dolphins. First down and 10. 26 seconds remaining. Eason looking for fire, and it'll be picked off. Glenn Blackwood goes up, comes down with it at the five-yard line. Fire really had no shot at that. Overthrown, he was open, but it would have to have been a very well-thrown football. Well, again, this is the biggest game Neeson's had in his young career as a professional, and he's going to have to play hard for him to win this game. So far, he's not really been on his mark that much. This interception and the one earlier he had in the game are really two poorly thrown passes. The third Patriot turnover. 19 seconds now remaining in the half. 
the Dolphins have the football near their own 10-yard line. You know, I'd like to think that the rain may have had something to do with that last pass, but it was such a tight spiral, I don't think it did. Remind you again of what's on the line. The Dolphins can't win the Eastern Division with a victory tonight. To assure that, they would have to win against Buffalo right here next week. But New England is well aware that if they can win here tonight, they are going to win the AFC East outright, and they have not won that since 1978. But then again, they have not won a football game here in the Orange Bowl since 1966. That's the end of the first half. The Dolphins over the Patriots, 17 to 7. A lot more football to come your way after this from our stations. Tuesday, Tony arranges a marriage. An arranged marriage is right out of the Middle Ages. It's cruel. It's barbaric. It's the way my parents got married. Oh, but the old ways are Tony's ways. It's tradition. <laughs> if you start singing from Fiddler on the Roof, I'm leaving. Who's the boss? Ben. Santa? It's a Christmas miracle when Jason tries to save Santa Claus. He's about to jump down the chimney. Growing pains. You'll love it. Tomorrow. Nobody has a tougher position than a pro defensive back. And nobody sweats more. But I don't shower with deodorant soap, because I made a break from that stuff. A clean break with ivory. Look, what you see is basic natural soap. And what you get is an honest clean. Some soaps cover you with smelly perfumes or deodorants. That stuff doesn't get you clean. Ivory makes me feel clean and smell clean. That's an honest clean. Make a clean break with ivory. No soap can get you cleaner, no matter who you're up against. Good evening. Coming up tonight here on Eyewitness News, a mob killing on a crowded mid-Manhattan street. Two men gunned down gangland style as they were getting out of their limousine tonight. Police say one of the men is reputed organized crime boss Paul Castellano. Castellano is currently on trial for federal racketeering charges. There are many questions tonight. Who was this notorious Castellano? And could this be the start of a citywide mob war? We'll have the full story in Eyewitness News tonight, right after the game. President Reagan was in Fort Campbell, Kentucky today. He led an emotional memorial service for the families of American soldiers killed in last week's Newfoundland plane crash. Mr. Reagan told the mourners they do not grieve alone. Also tonight, where do we stand in the battle against AIDS? Is the epidemic getting worse? The city has just issued a new report on the deadly disease. We'll have that for you. Bernard King braces Lon Silence. The Knicks superstar says he's coming back to play. And Corey McFerrin has a football playoff picture how tonight's game affects the standings at 11. Trivia is the game, weekdays at 4. Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, U.S. Olympic boxing heroes continue to throttle boxing's pro ranks. Mark Freeland, quick hands and a good combination have served him well. Tyrell Biggs, he's shown he's got a heavyweight punch. Evander Holyfield, a relentless style that can rock any opponent. They're all undefeated and will face their toughest bouts to date. See them live on ABC's Wide World of Sports. A critical game in the AFC East in Miami. Leaves New England 17 to 7 at halftime. Right now, we're going to take a look at the standings of the National Football Conference. Dallas has clinched the NFC East. The Rams have clinched the NFC West. The Bears clinched Central Division long times ago. There are two wild cards remaining with the Giants, the 49ers, and Washington still alive. Action now for the Giants and Cowboys yesterday. Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas. The Giants were in town looking ahead for their first divisional title in over two decades. Second quarter action, the Giants leading 14 to seven. Phil Simms is back. Look at the top of your screen. Big Ed Jones puts up that paw, bats it away, right into the arms of Jim Jeffcoat. He takes it 65 yards for the game-tying touchdown. And how many games have turned on an Ed Jones deflection? And yet another bizarre play for the Giants on the very next series. Sean Landetta is back to punt. He's afraid it would be blocked. He shovels the ball forward. It winds up right in the arms of Dexter Klinkscale for an apparent touchdown. However, the play was ruled an incomplete pass, but Dallas did score a touchdown on the following play to make it 21 to 14. Then in the fourth quarter, Dallas leading still 21-14. Steve Pelour is in a quarterback. He had replaced Gary Hogaboom, who had replaced an injured Danny White. Pelour looks over the middle, and he finds the rookie from Alabama State, Carl Poe. Poe running hard. Deep into giant territory before he's finally dropped by Terry Kennard. Dallas took it in, however, to make it Dallas 28, the Giants 14. 
And then in the fourth quarter, with Dallas leading 28-21, 52 seconds remaining, the Giants had the ball deep in Dallas territory. It's fourth down. Phil Sims is back. He rolls right. He looks for Byron Williams. But it's intercepted by number 22, Victor Scott. Dallas defeating the Giants 28-21. They take the NFC East. The Giants' title dreams are reduced to hope for a wild card spot. Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California. Yesterday, the Rams, Dieter Brock, more than justified. Coach John Robinson's faith in him with a big day against St. Louis. Second quarter action, the Rams leading 13-7. Brock hands off to Eric Dickerson. Dickerson, over left tackle for 18 yards. 124 yards on the day for Dickerson. He had 109 of those yards in the first half. Dieter Brock, a tremendous day. Four touchdown passes. On the very next play, following Dickerson's run, Dieter Brock is back. He looks over the middle, finds Tony Hunter, 47 yards and a touchdown. Tony Hunter rapidly becoming a big play receiver. The Rams took the lead 20 to seven, and then in the second quarter, leading 29 to seven, with 29 seconds remaining in the half, Dieter Brock is back once again. This time it's Henry Ellard. Ellard, 43 yards and a touchdown. The Rams blow away St. Louis, 46 to 14. Dieter Brock is now the third graded passer in the NFC. you Coburn huh? oh that's nice you don't have to be a big cheese to own a MasterCard I know the same card you bop around the south of France with I used to buy wool wool so you're not as hotsy totsy as you think Mr. Tinseltown may I buy you a drink anytime Jimbo Tuesday. North Pole, Santa speaking. Ho, ho, ho. It's a special holiday story. Ooh, this one's a pip. Maddie, I'd like you to meet Mary. Can I? See you outside? Sure. My manger's your manger. On Moonlighting. Tomorrow. Halftime once again. Miami over New England, 17 to 7. And a look at the AFC picture. The Raiders have won the AFC West. The Central Division is still alive. Cleveland and Cincinnati there with Cleveland having an edge. And again in the AFC East. If New England wins tonight, they are the champions of the East. And Miami will be looking for a wild card with a win over Buffalo on Sunday. Or if Denver loses on Friday night. The Jets, by the way, are still alive. They play Cleveland on Sunday. If they win, they're a wild card. But the Raiders locked it up yesterday, the AFC West. The Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, another big day for the Raiders' defense, and Marcus Allen against Seattle. Fourth quarter action, the Raiders leading 6-3. Mark Wilson is back. He has a lot of time. He looks deep over the middle, looking for number 85, Doki Williams. And the former UCLA star makes a diving catch to set up a touchdown by former USC star Marcus Allen, and what a day Marcus Allen had. It was his eighth consecutive 100-yard game. He can tie Walter Payton at nine next Monday night. You'll see it right here on ABC. And this is that very next play. Marcus Allen at his very best. He takes it in from seven yards out. The Raiders defeat Seattle 13-3. The Raiders, champions of the AFC West. My wife was having our second child. And uh, so Anthony and I were on our own. And we went to the store and I picked up a bargain baby shampoo, not Johnson's. I thought I was just helping out, but we used it, and Anthony got some shampoo in his eyes, and he began to cry, and uh, I felt awful. They may say baby shampoo, but many bargain brands sting, irritate eyes. Only Johnson says, no more tears. No more tears isn't just an ad slogan. It's very real. We're sticking with Johnson's. He's not an easy man to understand. It might be best not to press him. Even when you think you've got him figured out. You don't want to fight, you don't want to talk, you don't want to make love. You've pretty much eliminated all our options. You don't. I'm never going to leave you. He's Spencer for hire. The other day I received a letter and a plaque from an armed forces group in Australia. They are apparently hooked on Monday Night Football and wanted to say so. And I knew we got around, but I didn't realize how far our signal now was traveling. That is, until I screened this piece by Mike Lee. And Quad Robes will kick off for the Miami Dolphins. These days, when you kick a football in America, Robes kicks it off to the roar of the crowd. There's no telling where it might land. The National Football League landed on British television four years ago. Four, four, four. The audience here has increased 400%.
In London, there's even a video cafe where NFL games are the highlight of the week. And this is something really special, and there's no way I, I stop playing. I play football in the afternoon on a Sunday, and then I go home, I change, and I come here. And their destruction of Dallas a fortnight ago is still being talked about with awe across the states. So here we go, the Bears of the Dolphins. We join ABC's match commentators, O.J. Simpson, Joe Namath, and Frank Gifford. Reveille for the conversion. NFL games are seen throughout most of Europe, including Paris. There's even the French equivalent of the Monday night football anchor team. Also in Europe, Italian fans of American football can get their weekly fix of first downs and forward passes from a TV station in Milan. These NFL fans in Italy are trying to master the subtleties of the game, but have no trouble identifying one of the NFL's less subtle phenomenons. What they pull out of their own refrigerators for a football snack isn't exactly beer and popcorn, but this isn't exactly popcorn country. Good game, uh, the people there in front of the TV eating spaghetti and drinking wine. That's wine for sure. Be a little less. Flags down. From Europe, it's a quick kick to the Middle East. In Lebanon, those who aren't too busy with the unofficial national pastime of street fighting often tune in to Lebanese television, which reruns America's less violent unofficial national pastime. They're also tuning in to televised blitzes and tackles down under in Australia and in Japan. American football is very big in Tokyo. Special Japanese stores sell NFL souvenirs. Most of the world has a different view of the NFL than we grew up with, because in London, football undergoes electronic shrinking. A three-and-a-half-hour game in America becomes a one-hour game overseas. We take out most of the timeouts. We take out much of the sort of the delay of, of American football and the what we what we finish with is um, you know a very exciting package good evening the Chicago Bears have very little more to prove this regular season to foreigners American football is a television pageant larger than life its players almost too large to believe what does it look like when they take that all off I mean, are, they, are they quite sort of puny underneath all of that Perhaps there are a few mysteries about the NFL yet to be uncovered here. But throughout Europe, the Middle East, and the Far East, many people in many languages are learning new household words, like Frank, and Joe, and OJ, and refrigerator. This is Mike Lee for Monday Night Football in London. Thursday. it for yourself, the Colbys. Thursday. Someday, Richard Pryor is the ultimate gift. All the kids will be hollering for me. And Jackie Gleason's got him. I love you! The toy. It doesn't even need batteries. An ABC News business brief. Now from New York, Dan Cortes. Good evening. The Dow Jones Industrial Average surged 18 points today to close at yet another record high. President Reagan went to Capitol Hill to press fellow Republicans to support tax reform legislation. This evening, the White House said the effort may have succeeded. The Commerce Department today eased restrictions on exports to communist China. U.S. Steel today announced a $300 million deal with a South Korean steel firm to modernize one of its California plants. And former Air Force Secretary Thomas Reed was found innocent of charges he engaged in illegal inside stock trading. On New York financial markets, interest on T-bills rose. Gold gained two and a half dollars and the dollar finished lower. That's Business Brief. I'm Dan Kortz.
It's easy to put your finger on what's different about this imported beer. It's light and still light. 95 calories never tasted so imported. New York Telephone presents the Good Wishes Call. Andrew, congratulations. So my old heartthrob is getting married to someone else. The phone's a great way to send your best. And it's easy with New York Telephone's low regional calling area rates. I wish you all the happiness. But uh, listen, if things don't work out... So call and wish them well. I can't live without you. I can't... At Braun, we believe simple is better than complicated. Order is better than confusion. Quiet is better than loud. Only through superior design can one achieve superior performance. It is this philosophy that has helped make Braun the number one selling foil shaver in the world. What's also helped is that no other shaver gives you a closer shave. Braun, now available in America. Tonight on Eyewitness News, an organized crime murder in Midtown. Two men shot dead on a crowded street. Police say one of the victims is a reputed mobster. Story later. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Miller Beer. Miller, made the American way since 1855. By Pontiac, America's road car company. Pontiac, we build excitement. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. Back in the Orange Bowl in Miami. We're set to go. The Miami Dolphins will kick off to the New England Patriots, reminding you once again what's on the line for the Patriots of victory tonight. And they win in the AFC East. They, again, have not won here in the Orange Bowl since 1966. The Dolphins need a win tonight and a win next week against Buffalo here in the Orange Bowl to lock up the AFC East. Set to go here in the second half. This is starring Stefan Starry for the Patriots out to the 26-yard line, which will be first down and 10. Dolphins, Dan Marino in the first half, 11 of 23, 110 yards, one touchdown, one interception. And for the New England Patriots, Tony Eason, 7 of 13, 113 yards. He had the one touchdown. He had the two interceptions. Well, New England had some tough luck in the first half on first down. They underthrew a wide open Stephen Starring. And, of course, the running back, great James, dropped one pass on first down. They have to do better on first down if they're going to win this game. They bring out the run formation, and they immediately hand off to Craig James on a little counterplay right. They sent Collins left and brought James back right, and James will get good yardage out of it. Give him seven. It'll be second down and a long three as Mike Charles, the nose tackle, who has played a fine football game for the Dolphins, pursued that play, made the stop from behind. It'll be second down and three. Looks it over from the same formation. They open the second half. A strong formation left, and this is James. Hit right at the 35-yard line, held short of the first down by Mike Charles. It'll be third and short yardage for New England. This is what I think they wanted to do, O.J., when they came out to begin the football game, wanted to run the football. They beat Miami 17-13, November the 3rd, the last game the Dolphins lost, and they ran for 203 yards of those yards was over the middle and I noticed even on that run it was designed to go off tackle I think Craig James was just a little indecisive if he cuts back over the middle I think he's going to get positive yards all night Tatupu is in there for New England as is Weathers this is Robert Weathers and Weathers has the first down and much more and he almost broke it big out to the 48 yard line it'll be first down New England Vinny Testaverde, an outstanding quarterback at the University of Miami. Of course, he'll be taking the Hurricanes into the Sugar Bowl. Game will be bringing you New Year's night. Miami rated number two in the AP poll. They still have a shot at the national championship. Could Penn State get up in it? On first down, Craig James. 
again a bit indecisive. He gets to the 47-yard line. Look back to the inside once again, O.J. Gets well, about he, three out of it. Yeah, Frank, you know, he got there a little late. Once again, I think if he, uh, he was a little indecisive, the hole wasn't there, I think if he makes up his mind when the hole's not there, I'm not going to get outside. Outside is Hugh Green. Outside is Bob Brzezinski. Inside is Jay Brophy and Jackie Schiff playing linebacker. So it's not much decision there. Yeah, that time. Uh, yeah, Bob Brzezinski that time did cut it down. Had he cut back earlier, he would have gotten better yardage. Second down, it's a long seven for the Patriots. Mix up in the backfield. Collins winds up with it all by himself, however, out on the left side. And Jay Brophy will drop Collins for a loss. There was a collision in the backfield between James and Collins. And let's take a look at it from the end zone. And this hurts. Yes, it does, especially they had something happening on the other side. You saw both of the linemen got out there. Clean, and if he would have been closer to his lineman, I think he could have been off to the races. Loss of about four, so it'll be third down and 11. That's Starry and Fryer, top of your screen, the two wide receivers. Eason from the shotgun. And Hunt takes it once, then tried to get it into Starring late. It's incomplete, and the punting unit will come on for New England, and the Dolphin defense has forced the punt. Here in the early going of the second half. I'm telling you, this is typical of the Dolphins. You know, they really haven't stopped this team. This team has stopped themselves. They've had the chances to get the big positive yards. I played against Miami nine years. We never beat them here. And every time we went home, we said we should have won the game. We blew it. We should have won the game. Yeah, they're a finesse-type defense. They don't overpower you. They bend a bit, but they don't break. Figueredo is back for the Dolphins. Mitch Camarillo puts it up. It goes out to the left side and is taken there by Lyle Blackwood. He made the fair catch. And the Dolphins will have the football back just inside their own 25-yard line. Short punt by Camarillo, 33 yards. Pontiac. That'll be young Jack up for the weekend. Probably driving that new Pontiac he was talking about getting. Prestige car. Young Jack's? Nah. <laughs> Performance car. Maloney. Young hotshot like that want prestige. Your hat. <laughs> Guys that can not perform. Prestige. Got me a new Pontiac Grand Am, boys. See? Told ya. These guys came in here, wanted to buy us out. Direct the place like the rest of the block. This car's been in our family for 70 years, so we said, go ahead, build your building. But build it around us. There's still a place where some things are not for sale. Where beer is beer and the brand is Miller. Miller contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. The decision is in. Rocky is a winner. Due to overwhelming demand, we just put Rocky IV in a lot more theaters. Now you can cheer for the champ this Christmas at the family main event of the year. Rocky IV, rated PG. Check newspapers for local listings. Dan Marino needs 80 yards for his second consecutive 4,000-plus season. The only other player to do that in the history of the NFL, Dan Fouts. Marino has thrown the one touchdown pass, and he leads the NFL with touchdown passes. He was tied coming into tonight's game with Dan Fouts at 27. He's thrown one tonight for 28. More importantly, the Dolphins would like to win tonight. They'd like to win next week over Buffalo, and they would dearly like the Raiders to lose to the Rams a week from tonight in a game that will bring you from Los Angeles on the 23rd. And then they would be assured of the playoff being here in the Orange Bowl up to the Super Bowl. First down and 10. Tony Nathan is the single setback for the Dolphins. And this will be Nathan. He drops the ball, and it's loose. And Blackman has it. Tony Nathan never had control of that ball. Blackman was right there, reading the run play, getting ready to play the run, and the ball bounced right into his hands. Tony Nathan twice now has given up the football. Very uncharacteristic of this young man. Let's look again. 
Simple little toss right in his hands. He was looking ahead to the blocking up front, right into the hands of Don Blackman goes the ball. And New England with a big break. They trail 17 to 7 here in the third quarter. They have a first down at the 21 yard line of Miami. James Collins, the setback for New England. Craig James. There was an opening. He popped through it and was hit by Bud Brown, but he moves inside the 15-yard line. He'll get about six yards out of that. It'll be second down and four for New England. James, by the way, has been known to throw the football. He's thrown it a couple times this season. He's completed both of them, and they have both been for touchdowns. James now on the night, 34 tough yards on 10 carries. Second and four. That's Fryer in motion. James again, got a good block from Tony Collins, turned right back in the middle and runs into big Mike Charles and is held short of the first down near the 12-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Mike Charles playing that nose tackle spot, vacated by Bob Baumauer, a pro bowler for many years. Went to the pro bowl last year, didn't Bob Baumauer. Surgery, however, in the offseason to correct a chronic knee problem has kept Bob Baumauer out of the lineup, and Charles is doing a fine job. James on a counter. James with good running. That was a good swarming defense, and James just on his own. There's that little stutter step, O.J. It doesn't look all that effective, but it seems to get it done. Well, he, he understands running the football. He seems to be a very heads-up runner. This is my first time I've had an opportunity to watch him play for any length of time, and he's obviously just a heads-up runner, and he has a lot of confidence in his ability. Many backs at that time would have panicked, put their head down, and maybe not have gotten the first down. He has enough confidence in his ability to do his stutter step and still get the first down. And again, he had another fine block from Tony Collins. His first down, goal to goal for New England. James again. Again, Collins with a good block. And this time, James in the arms of Bud Brown is inside the five-yard line. It will be second down, goal to goal, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Orange Bowl sold out. Wild anticipation for this game as it developed down through the final weeks of the season. New England needs a victory tonight to win the AFC Eastern Division crown. Miami needs one tonight and next week against Buffalo to clinch the Eastern Division. Dolphins leading 17 to 7, but the Patriots are threatening. Second down, goal to goal. They have it inside the five-yard line of the Dolphins. James once again. And this time, good open field tackle. That was Glenn Blackwood. Slid right by a blocker, came in low and upset Greg James. Well, now, O.J., we've been talking about James being a smart runner. It seems if he'd have used Ron Wooten as guard that time, he could have walked in the end zone. Well, that's a classic case. You know, you see a ball, runner, he gets outside, he sees the pursuit is not there, and he figures if he can make it to the end zone. Now, if he had a guy like Reggie McKenzie that time, he wouldn't have to wait for him. He had to wait for Ron Wooten on that play, and he should have. You know, he should have waited for him. He could have went inside of the block. Third down, goal to go at the four-yard line. The Dolphin crowd is in it. Defense headed by Glenn Blackwood. He slowed him up first, and then they were all there. Two plays, you saw two bad choices by good runners. The first play, as Joe pointed out, James should have waited for his block. On that play, I think Tony Collins he had one chance, and that is to turn up. This team has, hasn't gotten any yards getting outside today. All their yards have been inside of the tackles, and he should have gone upfield on that play. Tony Franklin now on to bring the Patriots to within seven points. It'll be a 22-yard attempt. Franklin having a good year. 20 of 25. Eason is the holder. But in the uprights is Tony Franklin. The Dolphins lead the Patriots with 7-0-2, remaining in the third quarter by a touchdown. Beautiful day, huh? Yep. Hi. How you doing? 
I had a little trouble keeping up with you. Is that you back there? Yeah, some road, huh? Sure is. Hey, how do you like your Grand Am? Love it. Really handles. Well, I guess you just fly disappeared from me back there. <laughs> what engine you running? Three liter V6. Fuel injected? Oh, yeah. Thought maybe I'll see you next time through. Yeah, hey, maybe next time I'll have a, uh... Yeah. Aggressor tanks spotted. You've got good guys, and you've got bad guys. The Hunter and the Hunted. If you're gonna win, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Moving tank, direct front, 2,000. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. Ah! We win, the whole tank wins, the whole team wins, not just one person. Find your future in the army. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern and NFL Friday Night Special. A little more than half of the third quarter remaining here in the Orange Bowl. A misty, almost surrealistic night. Light refracting off the wet field. Rain has been falling on and off throughout the evening. The field is very slick. So much at stake here for both teams. Franklin to kick off for New England. Lorenzo Hampton is back for the Dolphins. And this time, Hampton will field it near the seven-yard line. Oh, this should be fun. Hampton, strong running out of the 25 to the 27-yard line. McSween made the stop for the Patriots there. The New England defense has toughened here in the second half. Marino, 110 yards on 11 completions of 23 attempts. As I mentioned early in the game, the New England defense rated fifth in the entire NFL. Seventh against the Russian. That's where the Dolphins have been doing most of the damage tonight. They are tenth against the pass. First and ten Miami. They're at their own 27-yard line. Joe Carter, who has worked well for the Dolphins tonight, is in there with Woody Bennett as a setback. Carter is number 23. Marino has Duper. And Duper with a good move against Playborn. Playborn thought he was going to step out of bounds. He spun back inside and got an additional five yards out of it. The first down is out over the 45-yard line. That's the second time they threw that ball, Joe, and uh, I'm not saying this because you're here, but it looked like Namath to Sour to me. Hey, George, yeah. <laughs> that was a perfectly timed pass, and this man, Duper, is such a tough guy to get hold of. Sensational little receiver. And that, again, what do you do with Marino? You try to put pressure on him, hit you with a quick passage. You give him time to pick you apart downfield. He's so strong. First down, Miami. Joe Carter. And he just explodes over the right side behind Steve Clark and Ronnie Lee. He'll get seven out of it into New England territory near the 47 yard line. Tony Franklin's. Of the barefooted kicker for New England. A little red in that instep. A lot of people have never really seen a kicker. You think you kick the ball with the toe. Even field goal kickers, they kick it with their instep. Not with the toes. I wonder if they put any kind of toughener on there. We'll have to find out. There's a lot of them around now. Second down and three. Moreno in a crowd, but he fires a shot. Clayton this time working in front of Lippitt. Uh, another first down for Miami. And that time Marino had New England Patriots all around him, but his line had not collapsed. They were still holding their blocks. He stepped right back into the pocket and fired it. I tell you, if they gave points, one and two points on pass completions, that would have been two to the quarterback and one to the receiver. That was all Marino. 42% of his 43 career starts have been 300 yard game for Dan Marino or more. Yeah. 
on first down. Joe Carter once again. Carter really popped by Steve Nelson, but nevertheless, he'll get four yards out of it. It'll bring up second down and six. Friday, Denver will be at Seattle. Denver, of course, needing to win on Friday night to retain any hope of a wild card spot. And again, take note of that special time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. If Denver loses on Friday, all three AFC East teams, by the way, the Jets, the Dolphins, and the Patriots are assured of playoff spots. But to make the playoffs as a wild card, Denver must win on Friday, and one of two other events must happen. Either the Jets lose to Cleveland Sunday, or tonight's loser loses again on Sunday. Danny Reeves, John Elway, tough Denver defense. They're still alive. Second down and six. Moreno in trouble. Fires one out of bounds. As Moreno knew that Don Blackman was bearing down on him. Good coverage on Clayton downfield, and Moreno had to throw it away. I think Dan got fooled that time with the coverage. New England went to a what we call a two deep zone and played five guys underneath and Dan simply didn't have anyone open. Wisely threw the ball away. Matt Moore comes back into the lineup. Final word from Don Shula who calls most of the plays. He'll get assistance at times from Don Strock. Third down and six. 32-yard line of New England. Again, Moreno was hurried, tried to get it to Duper, and just beyond his outstretched fingertips. Decision time now, and Juan Rebez will come out. Bays has hit from 44 yards tonight. His best thus far of the season is from 47 yards out. Keep an eye on number seven, the Art Plunk, and he's 6'7". He's in the middle of that Dolphin defense, and his job is to get his hands up. 50-yard attempt. Bays has hit from 60 when he was at the University of Tennessee. Looking good. And it is good. Reveille's his best field goal of his young career, the rookie from Tennessee. He hits from 50 yards. Earlier, he hit from 44 yards. It's a 2010 game. Where I come from, folks stand proud and tall. You know they're always sincere. It's where you were, did you were? A friend's a friend, and Miller's the beer. Miller's made. Contains no additives, no preservatives. Miller's made the American way. In my travels around the world, I found no two countries alike. No two governments alike. There's a lot for governments to disagree on. But 31 governments have found at least one thing they can agree on. The power of Sperry computer systems to make government manageable. Now, if 31 countries can agree on that, who knows what else? Pontiac! Hey, Joe, look who's here. Huh? Hey, Bob! Hey, Tony! Tony. What's this? It's my new son, for GT. It's turbocharged. Turbocharged? Oh, he makes a little money, and now he's a big shot. Nah, it wasn't that much. <laughs> How much? Nah. Pontiac Sunburn, huh? Well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I'd have to drive it. Sure you can handle it? Give me the keys. President Reagan's last-minute tax reform battle on Nightline tonight. Quad Reves is officially credited with the 49-yard field goal. And the Dolphins have a 20-10 lead over the Patriots with 4-16 remaining in the third quarter. Stephen Starring is deep now for New England. Very versatile football player out of McNeese State, where he was a quarterback. Passed for over 3,000 yards. Fine wide receiver for the Patriots. And this will be starring from the six-yard line. And starring gets it out close to the 37-yard line. 
A moment, if we could. Saturday, the world of baseball lost one of its genuine heroes. Roger Maris succumbing to a long battle against cancer. Roger was quiet, unassuming, the consummate professional, and for whatever reasons, he perhaps was not recognized as one of the game's true legends, but he will be. I knew him from our days when we shared Yankees Stadium together when I played with the Giants. Roger, of course, with the Yankees. All of us at ABC extend our deepest sympathies to all of the family of Roger Maris. First and ten, New England at their own 35-yard line. Eason throwing underneath the coverage. And this time Eason working to the tight end, Lynn Dawson. First time the Patriots have given their tight ends a call. Eric Ramsey has been a very effective receiver. Worked well last week against the Colts. Dawson got about eight out of it, so it'll be second down and two. The ball up near the 43-yard line. And Collins will have a first down at midfield, finding an opening over the left side behind John Hanna and Ryan Holloway. Joe, it seems that the Patriots, if they run up the middle, and when the uh, Dolphin linebackers try to stop that, and the only way they can stop that is to come up to the line of scrimmage, then just start throwing balls uh, deep turn-ins over the middle. That's where you want a quarterback, ideally, that can recognize what the defense is doing before the snap of the ball, hopefully to audibleize to the right play. First and ten, New England. Eason, Fryer, and Fryer has it in the 35-yard line for New England first down, right in front of Paul Lankford. First down, Fryer is one of those speedsters, and he is blazing fast. They clocked him 4-3-9 for the 40. Has had the great career at the University of Nebraska, and really is almost a rookie because he was injured so much at the time last year. But he is a threat every time he gets his hands on the football to take it all the way. At times you'll watch Fryer and you think you're looking at Johnny Rogers all over again. That's Fryer in motion. And James will work on the left side. Down close to the 32-yard line. Only a couple of yards out of that. Mike Charles again in on that stop and getting a lot of help from his friends. Be second down and eight. James and Dickerson, they were a pair at SMU. James himself had over 3,700 career yards, second only to Dickerson. The third all time in the Southwest Conference behind Dickerson and Earl Campbell. Rain really coming down now. Almost a foggy situation here in the Orange Bowl. Second down and eight. The reverse is to Morgan. And it did not fool a soul, including Bob Brzezinski. Dolphins bringing it all the way out, and Bob Brzezinski made the stop at the line of scrimmage. Well, there are two people, Tony Eason as well as Irving Pryor. They're the two guys that had to make the key block on that play. If they would have made their blocks, there would have been a little room to run in, but unfortunately, neither one made their block. The only trouble is Tony Eason. Eason was being asked to block Doug Betters, who is 6'7 and 265 pounds. Get low. <laughs> Get Very really low. low. <laughs> Third down and eight. Here's the crowd once again. Eason. That's Greg Hawthorne. He's short of the first down. Former Steeler first round draft pick. It was Alex Moyer, the rookie from Northwestern, who was out there defensively. Hawthorne just about a yard short. The game has been remarkably free of penalties. We have only had two, both of them against New England. Well, this is interesting. It appears they're going to go for it here. 17 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Fourth down and about a yard. They could be going with just a long count. We'll see a long count looking for the offside. But it's Tatupu. He usually gets it and Weathers, although Weathers carried it earlier on third and short. Tatupu. He gets the first down. And the Patriots keep this drive alive down at the 23-yard line. That was the stadium just jumping up and down. There was a flag down and there was movement against New England, and now it's back to the drawing board. 
But I think it's back to the field goal kicker now. <laughs> this is a five-yard penalty. Plus, he's going to have the wind at his back if they turn around. What wind there is right now doesn't really appear to be much. That was movement by the tight end, Lynn Dawson. And that will negate a very important first down. It'll be fourth down and six when we come back to the Orange Bowl after this from our station. Tuesday, I see a world starving for hope, a world starving for fantasy, a world starving for joy. How about you? I'm fine. I ate before I came in. Could it be a Christmas episode for Maddie and Dave? Saul King. Jim King. And your name again? Ruben King. Three Kings. Season's greetings from Moonlighting. Tomorrow. Now, a world of magic is in your hands. Sonic presents Omnimovie, a camera and video recorder in one. Capture magic moments forever. Get a close-up, Joe. Yeah. <sighs> Omnimovie uses full-size VHS tapes, plays Hollywood movies, or your own. Here's right, Santa. Don't miss a single Omnimovie magic moment from Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Since its introduction in the U.S., BMW has outperformed the energy crisis. The economic crisis single-handedly caused the automotive identity crisis and now makes its most powerful argument against the midlife crisis. All three series BMWs now have the added advantage of a fifth and sixth cylinder. For a test drive, contact your authorized BMW dealer. Tonight on Eyewitness News, a reputed organized crime boss gunned down on a crowded Manhattan street could be the start of a mob war. And Corey McFerrin has a playoff picture for the Jets and Giants after the game. Dr. Joyce Brothers, tomorrow at 9. You know, a lot of people may wonder why these kickers kick the football with their bare foot. Now, this young man, Mr. Franklin, went out for his high school team back when he was a sophomore. He hit three out of ten field goals from the 30-yard line. He got frustrated, took his shoe off, and he started making every one he tried. You see, when he was a young boy growing up, he didn't wear shoes that often. He always kicked the ball with his bare feet. Now he feels better doing it. It'll be a 49-yard attempt. Eason is the holder. Greg Morris provides a snap, and Franklin will be trying to Bring the Patriots to within a touchdown. And Franklin <laughs> hits the 49 yards out where just a few moments ago, Reves hit for the Dolphins. So once again, we have a seven-point football game as we are in the opening minutes here in the fourth quarter from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Franklin is in his second year with New England after five years in Philadelphia. As a rookie, they watched him kick a 59-yarder, second best in NFL history against Dallas, so he can get it out there. Of course, Tom Dempsey still holds that record at 63 yards. That's one of those you begin to wonder if they will ever break. They're getting close, though. Yep. The Patriots keeping it close. They would love to win tonight. It's been 17 straight years or straight games that they have not been able to win here in the Orange Bowl. They won back in 66. Lyndon Johnson was president then. <laughs> the war was dividing a nation. What did they say? Tony Easton was five years old. He doesn't care much about it, Jake. He didn't even know about it. That's right. Joe Namath had good knees. <laughs> had a lot of friends. Still do. Where were you in 66? Okay? I was at City College of San Francisco trying to get over. Lorenzo Hampton is deep for Miami. Franklin puts it on his way. Carter has it. And Carter with some fine running out over the 30-yard line near the 32-yard line. I remind you, later tonight on Nightline, when does the president become a lame duck? Some say now, if Reagan can't save tax reform from defeat by his own party. That's tonight on Nightline, following your late local news. hitting football game it has been it's been semi sloppy I guess you could say we've had our share of turnovers three apiece but a lot of it has been caused by some truly heavy hitting 
So much on the line between the Dolphins and the Patriots. First down and 10, Miami, from their own 32. And good running by Clark Nathan. He'll get seven out of that. Dolphins have really been running the football well, and they're doing it against the fifth best defensive team in the National Football League through 14 games. Well, they're doing it with not only good blocking up front, but more importantly, they're doing it with good play calling. I think they're just calling the right play at the right time. Something that the Patriots, I would debate if they've done that this game. Well, I wouldn't think so going all the way back to that draw. But then again, you know, if they make a good catch here, good pass there, it could be a different game. Second down and three. The Dolphins will try their own reverse. This is Mark Clayton. And Clayton turns the corner, picking up first down yardage out near the 49-yard line before he's stopped by Tippett. I tell you one thing, it's fun watching Andre Tippett. He really got caught inside on that play. He recognized once he was too far inside that the, the reverse was coming his way, and he fought his way outside. He made the tackle. He may not have done his job because he was supposed to have containment on that play, but he still made the tackle, and could have been a longer game than that if Tippett wasn't there. You know, he's the kind of player, O.J., that you look at the films during the week and you say, hey, look at the pursuit on this guy. We, we go left with him. He's going to run it down, and you put the play in, and then you realize what a great athlete he is. He got caught inside and still got back out there. But the Dolphins get the first down. They're near their own 49-yard line. Reno, rifles run downfield. Duper is there. Flag is down. This game is for the championship, and I don't I didn't see his arm come across his head. He did give him a little extra shot. But when you're playing for the championship in effect of a conference, now well, he says the face call. The face mask call. Face mask call number 42. Face it's Ronnie Lippett. He's the defender against Duper. Got the arm around there. Yep. <laughs> Well, he also swung it around there pretty severely, but he grabbed a hold of the face mask. I tell you, on a play like that on the helmet, that could have broke his arm. I agree. I think the arm is in much more jeopardy than any part of the face. First and 10, Miami. They're at the 30-yard line of New England. It's Hampton and Bennett. Those are the setbacks for the Dolphins. They've been using a lot of people tonight. He is stacked up. Good play by the grand old man of this New England team, the oldest player in pro football today. That's Julius Adams, or at least the oldest active player in terms of defensive lineman. Barris was also there. Yeah, the big Julie did make that play. He came down hard from his right end position and made the first contact. Good defensive play by Julius. Loss of about a yard. It'll be second down and 11. is going left. Duper splits right. The tight end in the lineup at the moment. Number 87, that's Dan Johnson. Moreno almost picked off. Tony Nathan, the intended receiver, and Steve Nelson got out there, got a hand on it. Uh, it would have been a good play, but it could have been an interception. Third down and 11. Well, I think Julius and Steve Nelson realize the importance of this defensive effort right now. They want to stop this Miami bunch. They smell championship. All they have to do is pull this game out. I'm sure they're trying to inspire the rest of that defensive unit. It's interesting how those old pros come through in the end. I remember two tall Jones yesterday. Batted that ball in the arms of Jeffcoat when the Giants were threatening. Patriots trail by seven. They have a third down and 11. That Moore is there. Flag comes down. It was Ernest Gibson battling that Moore. Marino held it to the last possible second. He was really leveled after he released it. And Marino gets up limping. It was a stop and go on the part of Nat Moore. And there's Gibson. Not only getting into his face, not playing the ball. Unquestionably, an appearance. Well, Gibson was beat. I don't think he expected the ball to be underthrown. He was just trying to catch up. 
And that, that slowed down. He ran, ran it right into him. Matt Moore made a great move, and Marino really helped him. Matt Moore came down about 12 yards, looked right back as if he anticipated the pass. He got a little pump fake from Marino, and then he turned on the speed and just left Gibson. Gibson tried to make up the yardage for the coverage and came up with the interference call. First down, goal to go. Will it be Davenport again? He usually is, number 30. Held short of the goal line with Ron Davenport. Davenport has nine touchdowns on the year. Well, now he's nine of 13 inside the five. Still a nice average. I think you'll get another shot, Joe. Yeah, give it to him a couple more times here. He's a big man, 6'2", 230-pounder. Mm. Runs tough down there. Runs a 4'5", 40. Second down, goal to go. Davenport. Yes, behind Ronnie Lee and Steve Clark over the right side. Oh, Miami stretches it out. Miami, of course, with a win tonight, will not clinch the division, but they have Buffalo in town next week. They feel that if they can win tonight, and they're looking awfully good, win against Buffalo, and then if the Rams can beat the Raiders a week from tonight, and we'll bring you that game, then Miami will have clinched the home field privilege, if you will, right up to the Super Bowl, should they be able to travel that far in the playoffs. Reveys for the conversion with 11.08 remaining in the game. Stretch the lead. 27-13. We'll be back in a moment. Here's you. Here's your competition. One of you will call AT&T small business experts. One of you won't. One of you will find out how to use long distance. Long distance to cover your customer base. To beat your competition. So who's going to call? You the other guy. AT&T Long Distance Services. Talk with us. AT&T, the right choice. Christopher. Hi, it's me. How are you doing? You did? That's great. I can't wait to see it. This man is an explorer. Tell mommy I'm on my way. One of thousands at General Motors embarking on an odyssey into the unknown, filled with technological wonders that might seem like science fiction. But at GM, they're becoming reality now. Lasers that probe body structure, sophisticated instrument displays, computer simulated testing, electronic navigation systems. But the road doesn't stop here. The 21st century lies dead ahead, and GM is leading the way there. Today's GM is evolving into a GM the future will demand, driving America down roads we've never been before. The GM Odyssey. Science, not fiction. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern and NFL Friday Night Special. It's almost home for the holidays for the Denver Broncos. They are still alive, however. Something has to happen, though. They need help. They have to win their game Friday night, and either the Jets lose to Cleveland on Sunday, or tonight's loser loses again on Sunday. They're a little on, on thin ice and at special time at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Reveys to kick off. Stephen Starring is deep for New England. He takes it at the goal line. And Starring out over the 25-yard line, close to the 27. Don McNeil made the stop there for the Dolphins. A week from tonight, we'll be bringing you that Rams Raider game from Anaheim. And no matter what's at stake there, that's going to be a thing to behold. Marcus Allen against Eric Dickerson, the city championship, if you will. Not a whole lot of love lost between those two ball clubs. First and 10 to England. 
Eason takes a little off it. He tries to go underneath the Tony Collins. It's incomplete as Eason has it behind him. Well, New England has been killing themselves on first down. They've had the opportunity on three or four occasions tonight to get a positive play on first down, and it wasn't anything Miami did to prevent it. It was something that New England did to themselves. That's right, a bad pass, a dropped ball. This is another example of a good catch or a better pass that had a big gainer. Second and 10, 27-yard line of New England. by Collins, the former 1,000-yard gainer back in 1983, whose running role has become a bit subordinated to that of Craig James. But Collins has made up for it, become a tremendous blocker. And he also came into tonight as the club's leading receiver. Let's look at it from the end zone. Good hole for Tony Collins, but he breaks it back as any good runner will. They're always looking to bring it back across the middle. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Eason looking to go deep. Good coverage by the Dolphins. Now he checks off, and he finds Derek Ramsey, and Ramsey will have a first down near the 37-yard line of the Dolphins. Dave Brophy was back defending for Miami. Tony Eason dearly wanted to get deep to Stanley Morgan. The Dolphins had him double covered deep. He had to move out of the pocket, but he was able to find Ramsey for the first down. Cedric Jones, top of your screen, number 83. Irving Fryer, number 80, split to the left, the wide receivers. Uh, Eason underthrows Jones. Jones had individual coverage out there by Paul Lankford. He might just have joined us. Watching the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins at the moment. 9.33 remaining in the game. The Dolphins lead the Patriots 27-13 in the game in which New England knew when they came into the game that a victory would give them the AFC Eastern Division Championship. New England has not won here in the Orange Bowl. They have lost 17 straight. They haven't won since 66. The Dolphins need a win tonight. A win next week against Buffalo to assure themselves of the Eastern Division title. New England has the football. They're at the 37-yard line of the Dolphins, second down and 10. A lot of pressure and wide open is Tony Collins. Collins just ripped through tacklers down to about the 15-yard line. Dolphins were in one of their rare blitzes for the night. And New England was able to burn them. Well, New England hasn't done the greatest job of getting the ball to Tony Collins and Greg James on passing situations, but I tell you what, I don't think you're going to find a finer pair of runners than these two guys, and I think on the offseason, I'd try to work on ways to get the ball to them in open field situations like that. New England, first and ten. They're just outside the 16-yard line of the Dolphins. And this is where the noise really gets deafening down here. Were the Dolphins drawn off? So often that's the case. Yes, the veteran John Hanna with a little movement. Dolphins picking up on it very quickly, coming off that entire right side. That changes the complexion considerably. A mental mistake costs five yards. His first down and 15. Uh, this man right here mentioned Weed Eubank today about how Weed helped him so much in becoming a player and a coach. And Weed used to stress, don't make those mental mistakes out there. First and 15, Eason. Fine pass to Stanley Morgan. He takes it all the way down to the five-yard line in the arms of Lankford, and it should be another New England first down. Eason, under tremendous pressure there, was able to get the ball to Morgan, and Morgan had good coverage by Lankford. He, Eason had to have it in just the perfect position, and he did. Beautifully thrown pass, certainly in contrast to the one he threw out there in a, to his hook man about two plays ago, the one he threw in the ground. I, I know that the dampness of the ball has to be affecting the quarterback's uh, passing game. Plenty of time for the Patriots. Same pattern as it again, and flag goes down. Irving Fryer was the intended receiver. William Judson was back there. He's trying to say I was playing the ball. <laughs> you can't put those hands up in front of a receiver and wave them back and forth. You have to look for the ball, too. And I'm afraid William never turned around to look for the football. 
Well, evidently one of the officials thought he might have because they're discussing it. Jeffrey Dick Jr. Number 49. Let's look at it again. William Judson covering Irving Fryer. Now, he cannot put those arms up, wave them back and forth, and screen Fryer away from the ball. He most certainly did. That's the same pattern they threw a touchdown earlier against Paul Langford. Fade away. Weathers and Tutupu are the setbacks for New England. Tutupu. Mosey Tutupu. Touchdown for New England. Certainly used his block as well that time. Oh, he he sure slowed did. up, then cut back. Hey, this is a tough New England team. They are mentally tough as well as physically tough. They have been battling back throughout the entire night, and they keep coming back. Sort of unusual seeing Moosey running outside like this. He was a great fullback at SC for a number of years, and he's the kind of guy you like to see blocking or running inside. Did a good job on that play. Real spark plug for this New England team. He does a great job on the special teams. And, of course, with Collins and James doing most of the work offensively. We don't get to see that much action. Franklin to bring the New England Patriots to within seven once again. We have 7.37 remaining here in the fourth quarter. The Dolphins lead cut once again to seven points. Buick announces 8.5% financing. Now's the time you're moving up and growing. Buick's here to take you where you're going. Now 8.5% financing is available on the nimble, stylish Buick Skyhawk. Wouldn't you move it up the style, yeah? Wouldn't you? You've done it all the while, yeah? There may be other cars with reduced financing, but they're not Buicks. Wouldn't you really Of all the beers in this world, there's only one brewed around the world in the great beer-drinking countries. Lohenbrau. Brewed in Munich. Brewed in England. Sweden. Canada. Japan. And here in America. That's how you get 600 years of Bavarian heritage in one smooth American beer. No wonder this world calls for Lohenbrau. your time the earth wakes up with you you always feel that spark of life in everything you do grape nuts for you it's as natural as the morning no sugar added no preservatives just an honest nutty crunch post grape nut cereal you know when you've got it good yes you know Undefeated Olympic heroes fight on. Mark Freeland, Tyrell Biggs, and Evander Holyfield Pro Fights. Live on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Saturday. Halfway through the final quarter in a game in which New England, with a victory, could win the AFC Eastern Division, a title that they have not had since 1978. It's also marked the first time since 1966 that they have been able to win here in the Orange Bowl. Earlier, they did win in the state of Florida, 1969, this home game of the Miami Dolphins was played in Tampa. And New England won that game. Lorenzo Hampton is deep. Tony Franklin to kick off. Patriots once again within seven points. And this is where Miami is usually so tough. Joe Carter will bring it out. Carter still on his feet. Cold. Ball is loose and the Patriots have it. And they're indicating touchdown. It was McSwain who provided the hit. Cedric Jones came up with the football, and they're mobbing Jones in the end zone. Joe Carter brought it out, hit a big pile up at the 20-yard line, spun out of it. Rod McSwain had a hold of him, ripped it out of his arms. Let's look again. Here comes Carter. He gets right into the pile here. Runs into McSwain. McSwain stays with him. Gets the ball out of there. And Cedric Jones was right there to take it in. And we are a conversion away from a tied football game here in the Orange Bowl. And how quickly things turn around. 
And the rain is coming down much harder than it has at any other time in the game. Franklin to tie it up. It is really raining now here in the Orange Bowl. We are tied at 27. Good. There he is. Cedric Jones will get the football. Strip list there by McSwain. Right into the arms of Jones. And the fourth year speedster out of Duke. Provides a touchdown that ties this football game up. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl, which is stunned at the moment. Norelco says they challenge every shaving instrument ever made. The rotary shaver from Ronson challenges Norelco for much less. Remington's president was so excited that he bought the company. Now you can get excited. The microfoil shaver from Ronson for much less. Introducing the Ronson shaving system with quality and performance and a money-back guarantee to prove it. The Ronson shaving system. Why pay an arm and a leg when all you really want is a close shave? the discerning people who buy Buicks more by Century than any other. Century. You know that you belong, yeah. Century. Keep strolling right along, yeah. Head into the future in this century. The Buick Century. Wouldn't you really American Express card buys Chinese food, rental cars, compact discs, theater tickets, ties, hotel rooms, toys, airline tickets, cruises, PCRs. But at times like these... Everything was in that bag. My American Express card, everything. Don't worry. Let me have your name. The card is worth much more than what it can buy. Yes, we can get you a new card in 24 hours. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. The Denver Broncos face a must-win game to keep playoff hopes alive. Can Seattle spoil the party? Live at 8 Eastern and NFL Friday Night Special. Franklin to kick off for New England. Deep is Hampton and Joe Carter. It will be Lorenzo Hampton. Good running by Hampton. He's out over the 30-yard line at the 32. The rain is coming down. This is going to be a very wet football that Dan Marino is going to try to move. Final words from Don Chula. Oh, boy. It's been raining on and off all evening. A very wet football field, a very slippery field. Oftentimes, if it isn't too bad, rain will help a passing team. The receivers know their cuts. They know where they're going. And a good, deliberate quarterback can make a lot out of it. Offense of the Patriots tied. 7-12 remaining in the game. Marino. Duper. Duper has a first down. He's near the 47-yard line. He was right in front of Ronnie Lippett, and Lippett was out there feeling all alone in blue once again. And when he is out there alone, he is going to give Duper a lot of room. He did. Duper broke it off at about 13 yards, gets the completion and the first down. Well, I guess these guys have to figure from New England. If they're going to give Duper or Clayton anything, they're going to give him the most difficult pass in football to complete, and that's the deep out to the right, the deep out to the left. And yeah, he was wide open, all right, but that's the toughest pass they can make Dan throw. And no one throws it better than Dan Marino today. Powerful arm to zip it out there on first and ten. Woody Bennett. And Bennett hustles inside Patriot territory to the 47-yard line, a gain of five. Larry McGrew made the stop. Ben Thomas made an excellent job of getting a lot of penetration on that play. Unfortunately, he couldn't wrap his arms around the, the runner. Otherwise, we would have had a two or three-yard loss. Second down and five. Clayton goes left. Duper is right. Dolphins very effective tonight running the football. Clayton. Simple pattern. Both outside receivers. Duper and Clayton take it down about eight yards 
angle it in. Both backs circle out of the backfield. Marino reads the defense and decides which outside receiver is going to have single coverage. That time it was Clayton. And boy, he reads it quickly, doesn't he, Joe? Oh, he does. Coach Schuller again. Uh, sounds redundant, and it is. But Schuller says right now Marino's playing better than he's ever played, and that's pretty darn awesome to me. He's seven yards away from another 4,000-yard season. On first and ten. Almost picked off. Going for the football on the outside was Lippett. The intended receiver was Woody Bennett. What happens sometimes in this kind of a situation when it's wet, once a quarterback starts his throw and changes his mind, he doesn't get a good grip on the ball the second time around. Marino wanted to go downtown this last time, and when he came over here to the short receiver, the ball flooded out of his hand and was nearly intercepted. Second down and ten. Marino looks it over again. He has Clayton right and Duper left. Tight end is Bruce Hardy. And Hardy hit at the 32-yard line, gets to the 31-yard line. He'll be short of the first down. It'll be third down and about three. Brad Marion, fine free safety for New England, made the stop. And it was a big stop, too. Bruce Hardy released inside and got underneath linebacker Steve Nelson, and it just turned into a foot race. Steve couldn't keep up with him, and if Fred Marion doesn't come up to make a tackle, that's a good 25, 30-yard gain. Fred Marion is another one of these unknown, almost superstars for this New England defense. The guy has seven interceptions, and he was AFC Defensive uh, Player of the Month last month in November. He also had three fumble recoveries, third down and three now, and there was movement, and I think it was the Dolphins' left side. This is Davenport. Marino, by the way, has gone over 4,000 yards unofficially. I'll tell you what, they may decline this penalty. Well, I think I would. I wouldn't give Marino another chance to throw it. Dolphins, the toughest team in the NFL on third and long situations. They're just uncanny in the third and long situation. Options being given out to Steve Nelson. I'm sure we'll have to decline. Number 34, offense, two Bennett was moving. That will be fourth down. Lack of concentration. Mental error. Herbaez comes onto the field. He has hit from 44 yards tonight. He has hit from 49 yards. But he could have a possible championship riding on this kick. Having a great year this rookie in Tennessee. He's 21 to 26. At his young career best earlier with a 49-yard effort. This will be from 48 yards. High snap. That usually means trouble, but not for Ravain. That was a great effort by Don Strzok. That ball was snapped high by Larry Lee. Strzok got it down, got it down perfectly. Unofficially, Reves is given a 47-yard field goal, and this game is untied once again. Don't go away. This world calls for good times. This world calls for sharing them now. This world calls for the best of the season. This world calls for low and bright. In German, it's Freie Weihnachten. Freie Weihnachten. In Swedish, it's Good Year. Language may change, but the message stays the same. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Good to see you! Happy holidays from the world of Lowenbrow. You might think a computer that doesn't cost a lot doesn't do a lot. But look at the IBM PC Junior. It's low priced, but runs over a thousand of the best programs written for the IBM PC. Programs for the classroom and powerful programs for business. And with PC Junior's extra memory attachment, it can run over a thousand more programs. PC Junior from IBM. Turn a little money into a lot of computer. Buick announces 8.5% financing. Now's the time. You're moving up and growing. Buick's here to take you where you're going. Now 8.5% financing is available on the nimble, stylish Buick Skyhawk. There may be 
the other cars with reduced financing, but they're not Buicks. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Kickers are strange about their holders. Don Strock did a great job. He got this ball down quickly, and he got it down very accurately. 48-yard field goal. Strock was just as happy as Quad Reves. The Patriots now trail by three once again. 4.27 remaining in the game. We'll tell you one more time. A win by the New England Patriots, and they win the AFC Eastern Division. The Dolphins can't clinch it tonight, but if they win tonight, they win against Buffalo here in the Orange Bowl next week. Then they will have clinched it, and then they will sit back and watch us Monday night, hoping that the Rams can knock off the Raiders, and they'll pick up the home field advantage. That's the scenario. But this one is far from over. Reveille to get it underway. Starring is deep once again for New England. This time he'll bring it out of the end zone. Starring never really had his feet under him. He slipped at about the 15-yard line, slipped again at the 20, and gets out to about the 23. Well, it was at this time of the game, the last time these two teams played, Steve Grogan was the quarterback. He walked in the huddle, and he told his players, hey, if we're going to be a championship team, we got to march down the field and score. They went 80 yards then to score. They had 76 yards to go now. Grogan, of course, started six games. He won six of those games. He had to be relieved by Eason, who had been hurt earlier in the season, against the Jets. The one game out of nine that they have lost in the last nine games they played. Here's Tony Collins. Collins running hard up to about the 29-yard line. He'll get four out of that. It'll be second down and six. Jackie Ship made the stop. Eason started the first six games when the Patriots opened the season. He was their starter, of course, last year. When he threw 23 touchdown passes. And then he was injured against Buffalo. He missed five games. Grogan started all of those games, won all of those games. Eason has been back, and he's won the last two. But he is quarterback. Second down and six. The rain really pouring down. James doing what he does the best over the right side, just bullying ahead. He'll have a first down at the 35-yard line. Well, we talked about decisions, Joe. One thing Miami knows is that New England is going to run the ball, and they're going to try to run the ball inside of the tackles. Is who's going to guess right? Miami's going to come up to stop that. Maybe New England will have a pass play on at that time. And that's where Eason hopefully could audibleize. Close to three minutes remaining. Fallon broke a tackle in the backfield. Deep in the backfield was Hugh Green. He got away from Green and was able to get about three yards out of it. It'll be second down and seven. Well, if Miami, I mean, if New England lines up in that eye, the way you stop them from running off tackle is you take those two outside backers and you bring them down the line as fast as they can to get them before they get to the line of scrimmage. And few linebackers in the league do it any better than Hugh Green. He's so quick. James. Charles, the nose tackle, with the stop. But James gets up to the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and a long two. And we're getting down to an area where it might be two downs. Two minutes uh, coming up. I, I really don't think they're going to give the ball to Marino again, unless they're stopped, obviously. They will not get a playoff before the two-minute warning, and Easton has already moved over to the sideline. They'll be talking with Ray Berry. Two minutes remaining. We'll be back in a moment. Setting off to find America. Gonna take my own sweet time to find America. Coda Color VR Films. Capturing America in all its glorious colors. And everywhere I see people smiling back at me. So glad to be. In America. Kodak film, because time goes by. <coughs> Honey, you finished Patty's present. Now get some rest. Rest? Not with this cold. On top of my cough, I'm sniffling, sneezing, aching, feverish, and my head stuffy. Sounds like you need a present. NyQuil? NyQuil will make you feel better, so much better. I can rest. And tomorrow you can help our birthday girl decorate. 
NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine from Vicks, of course. have three timeouts. We have received the two-minute warning. The Patriots have the football. They're at their own 43-yard line. They have a third down and about three, maybe a little less than three, and we, I think, are in that area as Easton gets a final word for Ray Berry and quarterback Steve Grogan, who was injured three weeks ago. You can see Grogan to the right of Easton. He's on crutches. He has a broken bone on his leg and, and damage to the knee. But I think we are in an area where New England is not going to want to give the ball back to Marino on a fourth and short. So we are basically in a four down situation, I think, for New England. I think we ought to try that option play that we watched San Diego run so efficiently against Pittsburgh uh -huh. a couple of weeks ago. I haven't seen that play stop yet. Well, it's a little wet. I don't think they're going to try that one now. <laughs> Tony Collins, Craig James, those are setbacks. Collins 33, James 32. He's very close. This will be totally dependent upon where they mark the ball. And he had to get just outside the 45-yard line. And Irving Fryer is indicating to the bench that he did not make it. About a half a yard short, or maybe a foot and a half short. I couldn't see if he tripped or it appeared as if he had a little cut back there. And New England wants timeout. They have a fourth down and about a foot. They want to talk it over. And Ray Berry has been in so many tense situations. Let's take a look, OJ, and see what did happen. Well, we know the cutback has been there most of the day. It's a nice hole there. Here's the back. And as he cuts, he didn't really cut back cleanly. If he'd have cut back cleanly, it appeared as if he had a lot of running room. I think he was thinking about the first down, or maybe he slipped. We couldn't tell from that angle. He went down uh, a little sooner than I thought he should have. It didn't look like he came out of the cut cleanly. Yes. Meantime, during that last two-minute warning, you would think that you'd have two plays called here if you didn't make the first down the first time, why they wouldn't know what to go in third and a foot. Well, with a championship and possibly the whole season on the line, I think I take my time on this one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good reason. But meantime, if we could have thought it out the first time, we'd have an extra time out left down the road here. But that's why I always want to play with you, Joe. <laughs> Ray Berry has become one of the real popular football coaches New England has ever had. Don Shula, of course, he's Don Shula. A win tonight. He moves back into a tie with Tom Landry. He's the second winningest coach in the history of this game. Trailing only Papa Bear George Hallam. Ray Berry replaced Ron Meyer last October. Quiet, very efficient, brought in a staff of his own assistants, and right now he's looking at a fourth down and about a foot, and this will be the play he called. That's to Tupu, and he gets it easily over the left side, moving behind Brian Holloway. The New England Patriots with 143 and the clock moving, and two timeouts we'll have a first down right near midfield well this is the way it should be coming down to the last two games of the season championship time tight game unfortunately the time they're gonna have to throw the ball they can't keep running it so we have a very nervous tony franklin on the sidelines fine shot Fryer was the intended receiver langford made a great play he reached right around Fryer and knocked the ball out of Fryer's hands Langford playing awfully tight on Fryer, who has that great speed. Fryer with a look outside, knows where Langford is, goes up for the football, and look at that play. Brilliant play by Langford. That would have put New England within Tony Franklin field goal range. It's second down and ten. Fryer is now split left. He's the one with the dynamite speed. Morgan, top of your screen. He has the better move. Collins 
the leading receiver for the Patriots inside the 35-yard line at the 34-yard line. First down to England. Hey, we talking football now. This is some football. <laughs> yeah, Joe, this is where it should be. I think I'd be looking for these backs coming out of the backfield. These linebackers cannot stay with backs like Tony Collins and Greg James. There's Franklin. I mentioned a moment ago. They are within his range right now. Good read by Eason on that. He had Morgan downfield working on Lankford. All the receivers were in line of sight. He took Collins. And Collins got the first down inside the 35. Fire in motion once again. Eason again looking for Collins. Almost intercepted. In and out of the arms Fire. of Glenn Blackwood. That was not a smart play. Come on, Joe. Oh, no, I agree. <laughs> Where is he throwing the football? He had three defenders there. Collins coming out of the backfield. He had attracted just about everyone. Well, Tony Eason dodged a bullet that time, and so did the Patriots. That should have been interception right there. All right, he got it back. Get it Boy, that's time. one that you will remember a long time if you're Glenn Blackwood and should this game go against the Dolphins. And they're still not in great field goal range. They've got to get a, another eight, nine yards. Second down and ten. The Dolphins holding on to a three-point lead, 106 remaining. A lot of time for Easton. He overthrows it. This time it will be picked off. Glenn Blackwood had another opportunity. He took no chances. He hooked slid out of the 25-yard line. The pass intended for Derek Ramsey. And the Dolphins players are going bananas. 56 seconds remaining. Easton is saying, how could I do it? He overthrew Derek Ramsey. Two poorly thrown footballs by Eason. The first one should have been picked off by Blackwood. The last one was. Oh, boy. You got safeties playing the middle. You need another eight yards to assure the fact that you can tie the game. You throw the safest passes you can throw at this point, I would think, Joe. Yeah. Oh, and he was He had really him open. open. He just flat missed him. Eason's third interception of the night. And look at Blackwood. He's taking no chances of coughing that football up. Patriots have two timeouts. Miami in the Orange Bowl. Reno goes down on his knees. The timeout will be called by the Patriots. And it's a game that will be long remembered by Tony Eason, but it is far from over for the New England Patriots. We'll tell you about that in a moment. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quantity is today's Buick. And by Lowenbrow, brewed in the great beer-drinking countries of the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow and by AT&T. In long-distance services, information systems, telephones, and computers, AT&T is the right choice. And by General Motors, the GM Odyssey. Science, not fiction. as though the Dolphins definitely are going to take over first place in the AFC East and can clinch the title with the win over Buffalo on Sunday or if the Jets and the Patriots both lose on Sunday. The Patriots remain alive for a playoff spot. They'll clinch at least a wild card berth if Denver loses at Seattle on Friday or if they defeat Cincinnati on Sunday. So again, it remains in their hands, but it looks as though the division is rapidly disappearing the divisional title that they wanted so desperately and of course the game that they wanted to win here and of course for the denver broncos they need a win most certainly on friday night to retain any hope of a wild card spot to make the playoffs as a wild card denver must win on friday and then look for help from other people either the jets lose to cleveland sunday or tonight's loser loses again on sunday and that would mean the patriots losing to cincinnati reno will drop on it one more time and the patriots will be able to stop it one more time This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. And Don Shula and the Orange Bowl magic has worked once again. And for Tony Eason, there'll be many great days. The young man who came into the league the same year Dan Marino came into this league. But as you watch him move around out there, you realize he has the strong arm. He has the mentality. Joe spoke of it earlier. He's tough. He doesn't tighten up. He threw a couple of bad passes tonight. He threw several of them. And 
On the last occasion, Glenn Blackwood turned it around. They'll go home like many teams have done uh, since I've been in oil when I was playing, and they'll say, hey, we outplayed the Dolphins as a game we should have won, but we'll look at three or four mistakes that they made, and they said we blew the game, but you know what? That's been happening here in the Orange Bowl ever since Sula's been here. And the other thing is, too, it's not all over for New England. They still have a shot at making the playoffs. They got a tough one next week, Cincinnati. They oh, yeah. put points on the board. That's the Cowboys. I admire those Cowboys, too. They lose that one to the Bears, 44 to nothing. They give up 56 points to Cincinnati. They come back and play a hot Giants team, a tough Giants team. And granted, they had some other bizarre happenings down there at Texas Stadium. But they hung in there. They hung tough. They got the big plays, as Joe mentioned, from the veterans. The big play by Ed Jones when they needed it. Time remaining in the game. New England is out of timeouts. Marino will stay on his feet as long as he can, dancing around uh, back there. Yeah, I'm not too sure that's the smart way to go, and using the clock right now. They're out of timeout. Ray Berry looking on, final seconds ticking away. But they do is... a penalty here and then they'll run a play and the game will be over there'll be about two seconds remaining they'll be able to snap the ball and the game will be over that's the 30 second clock it'll tick down to zero and there is now one second on the scoreboard clock Moreno should be able to back away from the center if he didn't want to do anything else, he could run in the end zone and take a safety. And they would still win it. So the penalty assessed against the Dolphins. And I know that hurts Don Shula. He does it from a strategic point of view. But this has been the least penalized team in pro football for many years. Now they're putting seconds back on the clock. They're going to go back to three seconds. That's the time that's actually remaining here in the game. So you might even be thinking that the Dolphins will back out of there and take a two-point safety. They could do it comfortably. We had it happen down here once before. And Bob Greasy did it. I forget the exact circumstances. That's it. The Dolphins win a close one. 27 from the Patriots and a well-played game by the New England Patriots. They were battling all the way back. Tony Eason on a tough night. 14 of 26, 217 yards, but the three interceptions, that did them in. Marino, 17 of 33, 192 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He's over 4,000 yards in consecutive seasons. Once again, the final score, Miami 30, New England 27. Stay tuned for ABC News Nightline following your late local news. Most of you on the West Coast, stay tuned for Hardcastle and McCormick. Travel